close till I get up. Time is barely on our side. I don't want to waste what's left. The storms we chase are leading us. And love is all we'll ever trust. Yeah. No, I don't want to waste what's left. And I
hoping to hold on to God to find it first. But here I am, cause I've been laying under palm trees waiting for the summer, knowing there's nowhere to go. Cause I am happy on this island, wanna be my fun left. I don't never want to leave. SPE Esports Cup presented by Aero Energy. And today we're going to be bringing you probably the most unique, yet one of the most exciting esports out there in existence. Of course, I am talking about Farming Simulator 2019. And what better place to do it than live at the ECA? Well, kind of live. It is in the virtual event this year, but that's okay because we are still on location. We are social distancing. We are playing things safe, but 
Playing is definitely the key word there because several high schools from both the regions as well as the city of Brisbane have come together today to compete for a chance at a $1,500 prize pool. It's Farming Simulator, it's eSports, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So I hope you're all as excited as I am as we're going to take a look at our matchups and our teams realistically of the day. As mentioned before, eight schools here will be competing, including Maryborough, TSS, Kelvin Grove, Forest Lakes, Earnshaw State College, Ormiston College, and Somerset. As I mentioned before, four teams are from the city, four teams are from the regions, and our grand final is guaranteed to be a city versus regional match. Of course, that's not going to be until tomorrow, as today we're going to find out which four teams really qualify for that second stage. We will be presenting two best of fives with our first match consisting of Maryborough State High School taking on TSS Borders. Now, I'm sure you all saw that slide before. TSS actually is coming in with two teams. So the Southport School, you know, they have a lot of teams. They have a lot of, a lot of good farmers out there in the regions, as I would hope to expect. I mean, realistically, if I were to be picking favorites, I'd be leading towards those regional schools. However... They're going to be almost cannibalizing each other as they're going to be playing each other in that top half of the bracket. The lower half, our second match of the day, will be between two cities. It will be Kelvin Grove State College taking on Forest Lakes. But before we even get to that, we have to get to our first match. Now, I'm probably speaking a little quickly. And for those of you who aren't too familiar with Farming Simulator and how this really turns into a competitive eSport, I'll be helping explain it as we go along. It's a very much a unique game, but... For, you know, people out there who are more familiar with farming, I think you're going to notice a lot of familiar scenes. Essentially, it is a game based upon scoring points and how you score points. It's all about, you know, harvesting wheat, essentially, and making hay bales and scoring in that fast. It's almost similar to a board game, but it's still a 3v3 board game and it involves, you know, teamwork, communication, timing, pretty much everything that you would come to expect with a more traditional sport, but with a bit of a farming edge to it. It will all make more sense when we do get into the match, which we will be doing momentarily. Now, on the blue side, it will be Maryborough, and in red, that is the Southport School. So you can see some of the lineups soon, as hopefully we will be kicking things off and getting into the match. Uh, I want to see, you know, so to you who are online, obviously, I can't see you, but I'm hoping you're out there on that Twitch chat showing that support. And to some of the, you know, schools and students that are here, I do can hear you. Like, these headphones aren't entirely soundproof, so if you ever make some noise, I'm excited to hear it. But we are going into the first stage of the game already, which is picks and bans. Now, for those of you familiar with League of Legends or realistically any MOBA, you should be familiar with the idea of what a pick and ban actually is. But in Farming Simulator, it's all about the vehicles. That's what they're going to be looking to get rid of, some of those more powerful ones. Now, realistically, there's sort of three vehicles that come into play in Farming Simulator. You have, you know, your tractors, which are used as front loaders as well as essential general transport. You also have your harvesters and your balers. Now, typically, with each of these vehicles, there's certain stats that you're looking for. Obviously, with the tractors, they're the front loaders. You want a lot of horsepower, but also a lot of speed. With your harvesters, you really want a lot of width to them, so you can just sort of take up as much space as possible, get as much of the grain as possible. And balers, well, that's also all about that horsepower as well. And how much hay bale you can actually transport at the same time, not to mention the speed at which it is made, efficiency. All of these stats do come into play as... We can see everyone is sort of locking in which vehicles they want. Now, there also will be passives that each team will have, sort of special little traits that you also get to select, which we haven't seen just yet. As At the moment, it definitely looks as if each side definitely prioritizing front loaders in terms of their picks at this stage. Uh, it's interesting to see how much all these players will stick with these tractors when we go into the game. I can kind of show you why. As now we're going to be choosing which sort of perks we're going to be going for right now, each team locking at the same time. Now, typically, there are some more picks in these traits that you want to prioritize. Transport Company is actually one of the newer ones that is getting quite stronger. That means you get an extra piece of equipment. It's sort of this special baler that can, like, automatically grab those hay bales and stack them for you. Slight Edge is another popular one. I believe that gives you that extra acceleration that you will need, but no one's going for, you know, the increased max speed, and I find that very interesting. Oh, no, I did see it. Sorry, Mary Bro did get that increased max speed, so each of these teams a little bit different than what you'd see in a conventional meta for Farming Simulator, however, that is A-OK. -okay. The players in this game, it should be worth noted, you know, they're all here having fun. Some of them are learning the game and playing it for the first time, and we are already kicking off our first event in this best of three. 
Not your typical best of three. We will be playing all three matches, but taking a look at the overall screen right now, you can see the, how the map is laid out. Each side is exactly symmetrical. Uh, so it is a sense of, you know, you're sort of playing with yourself and just trying to get that maximum efficiency. However, things you do on your side will affect situations on the other side. The big one are those key tractor ports that you see right there, some of the vehicles that the players are going to unlock. If you get one on your side, it means that your opponents on the other side are not able to grab it for themselves. So if there's a specific piece of equipment that you want, you need to race forward and get to it as fast as possible. We're going to jump in and take a quicker look at how some of our players are going. Here we can see, I believe, this is Shaggy right now, who's learning how to reverse in this situation. That's okay, he should be getting going as we're gonna zoom out a bit just to see what he's got going. All right, so we already have a baler in play. Gonna go ahead and start making some of those hay bales. Now, hay bales are important because that is how you score points in this game. Uh, eventually, you'll have to take the hay bales over to, where is it? There's a thistle area, you know, the barn. Here we are, this is where the hay bales have to go. Woo, this is where the points will be collected. You bring your hay bales over here, you can either store them underneath or you put them on this conveyor belt for a lot more points. Each hay bale is worth 10 points, but as you can see underneath there are multipliers. You can raise or lower that depending on how much grain you start to harvest. Uh, furthermore, that first hay bale that does get collected will be worth double points. So the first hay bale to go through will be worth 40 points as opposed to 20 or 10, which they are more commonly used as. as we're going to go take a look and see how people are going already. We can see some harvesting going through, and look how tight both Cargan and Tobes are back to back immediately, just, you know, going straight ahead, getting those hay bales made as quickly as possible. You can see them starting to plop out behind Tobes right there. I love how tightly they are playing. Obviously, you know, a bit of teamwork, a bit of pre-planning right now, and all you need is that third player just going behind to start collecting those hay bales as, uh-oh, Tobes! Uh, I think he's missed some, so he's going to go back and make sure he collects everything at this stage. Hardly as well, just going to town right now with the harvester. So it's a two harvester strap and one baler at this stage. And eventually they're going to have to go ahead and get some front loaders and move them over. Meanwhile, taking a quick look at the other side, let's see how the blue team is going. Once my buttons work. <laughs> Here we are. Nope, that's still the red team. Okay, interesting. As we're going to keep on going on, and I'm not sure what's going on right here. It looks like we're a little bit stuck as, yep, this is the blue team right now. May have stalled his vehicle. There we go. Yoshi's finally gets moving. Going to start bailing themselves, but you need to keep driving to keep collecting it right now as, unfortunately, sitting still is not entirely how you start bailing that hay. It's, it's all about speed in this game, speed and efficiency. Blondie going to work on the harvester, as you can see right here, has a nice even trail. Very wide approach, so that's pretty good. Unfortunately, you really want to get that paler right behind it in order to follow through as we're taking a look right now as a whole. Only Blondie, the only one at this stage, kind of pushing forward for the Maryboro side. Unfortunately, Yoshi still kind of stuck, and I'm trying to find where Shaggy has wound up. He's kind of got a little missing. Oh, he's still trying to figure out how to get that truck up here. Here we see Shaggy going ahead. He has gone ahead and collected himself that baler as well, so he should be looking to help out his team and really starting to get that bale, those hay bales going. Back over on the red side, of course, for TSS. Let's get a nice aerial view. Definitely a more organized approach for these three. As you can see, Cargan, very neat line, getting as much of that wheat as possible to start making those hay bales. No one's really made a play for the grain yet, and now the grain is very interesting. So aside from wheat, you also can harvest grain. In order to do so, you then stack it in this vehicle right here. You need to get a tractor in order to open it up. And then you take that grain over into town. You essentially dump it in this spot right here. And the more grain you dump over here, the higher that multiplier will go up. And then when you start cashing in your hay bales, well, with that higher multiplier, that's going to mean more scores. But it does cause your conveyor belt to go, go slower. This is counteracted, however, as your multiplier rises, your opponent's multiplier will drop. So I'm curious to see which team might make a play for that grain as we continue to watch right now. Both Blondie and Shaggy just continuing to work together. We're seeing a bit more organization now on that Maryboro side, something that was lacking initially. Yoshi still kind of figuring out how to drive, it looks like, has the speed and now just comes straight into the wheat, but you can see immediately the tractor is slowed down this game. It does have physics. This is an important thing. You have to be able to really sort of plan where you want to go. And 
I believe Yoshi is going to start collecting the hay bales now that are coming off of the back, although it didn't come back all the way. Yoshi, you know, you can't drive the baler on its own. You need, you need to attach something to it if you want to drive it, my friend. That's all right. He'll figure it out eventually as we go ahead and take a look at how things are going for TSS. Cargan, again, a very efficient line right now. You can see all of this wheat ready to be collected either for the hay bale or perhaps for, you know, our little trough right over here. Hardly as well. Very neat, very organized, very efficient approach coming from TSS right now. We'll see how this pays out. And we already have gotten our first points, actually, as this was going on. TSS got the first hay bale. They got the double points, but they didn't take it on the conveyor belt which is a little bit surprising, actually. They went ahead and sort of took it underneath. Now, this actually affects how many points are scored. If you score underneath there by putting the hay bales where it's easier to go through, you, you get less points. By putting it on the conveyor belt, you get more points. And typically, that's how teams sort of approach it. You want to put it on the conveyor belt. You want to maximize the amount of points as possible. Farming Simulator, it's all about efficiency. That is the name of the game, as Hardly as well as Tobes working together. Now, there's no grain yet, Tobes, so... You can take that where you want to. However, you need to have people load the grain sort of into it. And you can see right now that he's going to try to work with Hardly and almost do it on the move. You can see right here, that little shoot's going to go right into the tube. But he's not really putting it in the right spot. There we go. Now, normally teams actually don't do this from what I've seen. It, it, they usually just stay stationary and fill it up. But by doing it on the move, perhaps they can increase the efficiency. Unfortunately, Tobes is going the wrong way as all that grain needs to be placed all the way back over here in the town, so a little bit awkward. Meanwhile, taking a quick look at how Maryborough is going. Again, those long straight lines slowly being harvested right now. As we can see, Blondie, there's a lot of grain stored in there, and it's going to be starting to be kind of placed in it. Oh, ooh, a little bit too far. Not quite accurate enough, so he's going to have to go ahead and go for that reposition. As we hit that eight-minute mark. Now, eight minutes is a very important time for the game because somewhere within the sort of eight- to six-minute mark, we're going to see a couple power-ups appear on to the screen. And it's really a case of, like, the power-ups will appear on both maps simultaneously, but the first team to get it gets the power-up for both sides. And that can either increase your bale production or your sort of wheat and grain production. I'll be curious to see which ones go for us. Shaggy looking to collect some points right now for that blue side. Maryboro trying to get their first point. Shaggy's going to try to use the conveyor belt. See if he's going to be able to bring it in right now, lining it up. Need to drop it off. It, again, it's not an automatic thing. It needs to be aligned straight. Otherwise, it might fall off, as we're about to see right here. Shaggy, feeling confidence, probably going to drive away, but I'm not sure it's going to make it as, oh, the hay bale falls down. And that's a fair bit of points lost, unfortunately, for Maryborough, unless he tries again. Meanwhile, on the TSS side, just look at the efficiency and how much ground they have covered, not to mention Tobes that's continuing to fill up the grain. I heard a crashing noise. I'm not sure anyone else picked up on that, I believe. I'm not sure hardly... All right. Oh, the power-up has been dropped. All right, so the power-ups have been dropped. You can see right here each of those power-ups. We'll see where they go. Tobes is going to collect one of them. Looking for the green. No, it's going to be going for the wheat one. Interesting choice. So the grain boost has been activated, and that means if you dump that grain, as I mentioned before, into that chute that we saw in town, you get, you know, faster production in terms of rising that multiplier. Neither team has really gone for it just yet. Shaggy. Eventually did get that hay bale through, only got 10 points for it as it didn't go up along the chute. Bit unfortunate. Oh, no, it did go up. So, yeah, that's actually a critical 10 points right there. So, oh, no, it didn't because it would have been 20 had it done correctly. My apologies. I'm not very good at math uh, at this stage of the tournament. That's all right. Yoshi's continuing to go ahead and create some more hay bales for Blondie, who is following through. The teamwork in play. All they need now is Shaggy to start collecting them because there's a lot of hay bales right now on the farm for Maryborough that needs to be collected. That is points sort of left out and about. And with only five and a half minutes roughly left, they need to get a move on. Meanwhile, on the other side, TSS, they have the lead, but they've only collected one hay bale as well. Again, they're putting so much effort on the grain at this stage, but the grain only goes so far. At some stage, you need to start those balers going. You need to start actually collecting those hay bales if you want to score. And I'm looking around. And I'm not seeing any hay bales. I'm just seeing a lot of grain, and grain will only get you so far. Where is the baler? There is the baler finally getting put into play right there by Kerrigan. And eventually we can see the hay bales start to plop out. They just need someone to collect it. And I'm thinking if I am hardly at this stage, I might bail on the harvester. You have more than enough wheat sort of there to be collected. It's time to start cashing in those hay bales. On the other side, Shaggy going for a bit of a run. I'm not really sure where to. 
There, there's nothing over here, Shaggy. Oh, it's the tractor hiding. All right, it's going to go ahead and get that loader, and it's going to keep trying to score those more points as it is going to become a mad dash race to the finish. Yoshi continuing to get those bales. Shaggy will be collecting the bales, looking to score those points. Under five minutes to go in our first game. Kerrigan still creating those bales. So many now left on the farm right now as Hartley continuing to get more and more wheat. And it's, it's time to move, TSS. It's time to start collecting those bales. It's time to start scoring those points as Tobes is going to get that multiplier going. And that's going to be quite huge. It's going to be a lot, a lot, a lot of a multiplying bonus going to this red side, but it will be all for naught if they can't get any bales into their barn. That's going to be sort of the deciding factor, I feel like, in this one right now. Blondie as well, continuing to go ahead and just keep on harvesting this grain. And I'm very surprised by this strategy right now. Like, the harvesters, they were used very, very late. And at this age, you should be getting those balers. You should be getting those loaders. You should be trying to cash in because there's just under four minutes to go. Tobes, understanding the situation now, he's going to try and race in, see what he can collect, although... Oh no, he's going for another baler. No one's looking to cash in the points with only three and a half minutes left. There's so many hay bales on each side. It's time to collect, everybody. It's not time to create more, hardly. Eh, still going to keep, keep on, keep on harvesting. Fair enough. More harvesting being done by Blondie as well, and... If this was a race to see who could harvest more, I might understand the strategies at this stage, although it would very much go on the TSS side. Like, they nearly harvested everything. So kudos on that front. But with just three minutes, it's all about getting those hay bales into these barns. And as you can see, no one is really making a move on it just yet. Tobes has gone ahead and he has collected. Yes, this is that extra piece of equipment that TSS did opt for at the start. And... This will auto-load the hay bales that are out there, as well as stack them, which makes it very easier to get on that conveyor belt to get into the barn. I'm just worried they might not have enough time to use it completely efficiently, but that is okay. Again, this is, you know, for a lot of these players, this is their first time sort of attacking the game, so they are still learning how it works. Two and a half minutes, no one has made a move to start getting those hay bales really into that barn. It's going to be down to the wire, I feel like, and the pressure should be on that Mary Burroughs side as... They are the ones who are behind. Shaggy has a hay bale. No, he doesn't have a hay bale. He's out the right part of the farm, but he doesn't have the hay bale. And unfortunately for him, that bridge is up, so he's going to have to take the longer approach to get to it. Yashi as well, just continuing to try and find something. But there's no front loader on that tractor. And said, you know, just going to go for a run in the field, as you do, trying to get his way to the front loader right there. And perhaps Yashi will be able to start bringing it back however on TSS. Continuing to harvest, continuing to stack those hay bales. And you got a nice stack of four right there. And Tobes can go straight for the barn. And unfortunately, neither side was really able to get that wheat and that grain into the grain harvester to get the multiplier going. I think even though TSS was going for it a bit more, I, they just didn't have enough time. The bridge has come down. It is now time to get those hay bales into the barn. 90 seconds remaining for each of these sides. Shaggy. He has that hay bale, and he's not going to go for the conveyor belt. He's just going to dump it into the barn itself. Two more in that facet will actually give Maryborough the lead. On the opposite side, though, you can see TSS. They're starting to get close. Tobes sitting on there with one, two, three, four, five, actually. So assuming he takes it underneath, because with only a minute remaining, he's got to go underneath. That is 50 points on the table. Will he be able to get it through in the end? Meanwhile, over in blue, you can sort of see poor, poor, poor Maryborough right now. They're trying to get as much as they can. Look at where the hay bale is. It's stuck in the bridge. Shaggy, he's going to have to try to find a way to spike and maybe get this game into a tie situation if he's able to score at 45 seconds. Blondie still making hay bales instead of trying to cash them in. Yoshi as well. He needs to get a move on as Shaggy continues. Now's a chance to grab it. Go Shaggy, go! You've only got 30 seconds to get those points through, but on the other side, Tobes has taken all of those hay bales into the barn. All he has to do is load them in, but Tobes first has to get them off of the back 
of the trailer. Eventually, they will fall down 18 seconds. Realistically, if TSS gets one of those in, they will probably take this game. 12 seconds remaining. We're going to watch Maryborough to see if they can get that last hay bale in. Time is not on their side. Yoshi racing forward. Five seconds to go. Will he be able to get the tie? Get the equalizer. It goes in with one second, and we have ourselves a draw at the end of the first game. 30-30 aside in a best of three. I'm not sure what that means in terms of implications of standings. I think this is going to be a very interesting best of three <laughs> moving forward at this stage. My goodness. I mean, talk about coming down to the wire. Yoshi barely able to race that one through. In my eyes, tiebreak maybe should go to wheat delivered. I'm not too sure. I, 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 it's a very unique situation in this one. That's why we have refs. They're smarter than I am. They will figure it out. However, that will end that first game, and eventually I'll get a reading on what a tie actually means. But until then, we are counting it as a tie. Fantastic. So, <laughs> look, Farming Simulator, I told you it was going to be close. I told you it was going to be exciting, and I think game one did deliver. However, before we get too far into it, I actually have a very special guest up here with me. He is a teacher from Maryboro as well. Of course, I'm talking about Mr. Damien, and Damien, my friend, what do you think about that first time watching, you know, a Farming Simulator event? Well, I definitely like the ending. <laughs> yeah, I, I was watching you sort of as Yoshi was racing, and I could see that excitement sort of growing and like getting more palpable as like, you know, he was, and he got there at the end. Yeah, no, I, I, I like the concept of it. I've never seen it before. <laughs> I've never played it, but uh, it's certainly something worth watching. Yeah, it's, it, it's a lot more exciting than I think one would expect from a game called Farming Simulator 2019. Yeah, I can, I can see there's plenty of strategy in it if you've played it for a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. And speaking of strategy, actually, I kind of want to carry this back over and sort of like esports as a whole and how high schools, especially in the Queensland regions, are starting to approach it a lot more, starting to accept it, it feels like, a lot more. As a teacher, what do you sort of think of this like rise of esports as a high school extra curricular activity. Yeah, look, and I'll make it clear from the start, I'm just a bit of a fill-in today. Um, the, the, the lady who looks after our crew at school, uh, Tracy Rowley, she does a great job with the kids. Um, it's certainly growing, and uh, it's probably one of the good things that have come out of COVID, um, <laughs> because uh, since COVID, it, the numbers of kids that got into it at school went through the roof. Uh, and, and what I am seeing now that I've had a little bit to do with it is that it's great that it, it brings a bit of a team um, scenario to the sport, which, yeah. is, which is great. And I think um, especially because there's always going to sort of be that stigma, I feel like, when it comes to esports and it's always going to get compared to the more traditional sports, you know, your crickets, your rugby's, your AFL's and that. However, you can still see a lot of the same lessons that can almost be applied when students sort of participate in those events, which is the teamwork, learning how to handle adversity, wins, losses, learning how to balance your daily life schedule. And do you feel like as sort of that teacher and almost in the mentoring role, role as these esports sort of do start to grow, like is that sort of the direction you want to see it head? Oh, look, I, I think it's great. Any, anything that can teach our young people to be able to work together. And, and just like you said, when they face a bit of adversity, not just give up, but look into how they can work together to fix the problem and, and will make things better. If they can apply that across the broader the broader facts of their life, it's all good. Absolutely. And you can see sort of within that first game how that teamwork and how important the communication really has to be in a game like this because it is. It's all about timing, essentially. I mean, yes, there is the mechanical skill. I had a crack at driving the tractors before. I don't know. Did you have a chance to play No, I haven't had a go, no. It's not like driving a real thing. I can say that much right now. I know you are the regional school, so I'd expect <laughs> you to have more experience, but... Getting behind the keyboard and mouse, it's a, it's a whole nother beast. Yeah, I think driving a real tractor might be much easier. I, I, that's sort of what I feel. I, I mean, I didn't know it was possible, but like in my little experience playing around with it, I somehow managed to get all four wheels off the ground, uh, which shouldn't be possible. But then again, you know, watching the students approach it, knowing how fast they pick it up, I feel like they'd be a lot better than us. Yeah, I was watching Josh before, and he, he, had, the, he had the baler and the tractor vertical on the ramp, and I'm thinking... <laughs> In real life, there's a few troubles there, but uh, in a game like this, it's, uh, it's all good. I feel like that would turn then into a very expensive problem. <laughs> very much so. Um, moving on from that, though, I mean, it's sort of that elephant in the room. I think that's worth addressing because ECHA is still happening, but it's a digital ECHA this time. However, yep. we were able to sort of bring that onstage environment, that esports environment. How important do you feel that is you know, to the students to be able to still come out here and sort of get to 
experience all of this. Oh, I, I think it's great. I, uh, like I said, uh, I, I came into this late, um, what, this concept and what was going to happen here today, but uh, coming in and seeing the job that's been done and how it's been set up, and, uh, and uh, you can just see the kids are having a great time. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, one of the unique things about esports as well is you do sort of get these sort of stage environments and being able to play not just in front of, you know, friends and family in person, but also that online aspect as well, where everyone can sort of watch and cheer them on. I mean, it's a whole nother beast. Oh, look, I definitely, and I know these guys have got family at home um, watching the cast and uh, yeah, I know they're all excited to see them taking part. Exactly. So what is the expectation then? Because now we're going to get to the nitty gritties, all right? The expectations coming into this. I'm assuming you want to win it all. How, how, how far is your team going to go? Oh, look, I think the guys came here realistically knowing that they hadn't played it too much. And, uh, but I think uh, now they've had to crack at it and they've had a bit more of a talk about maybe some strategy around what they're going to do next time. I'll be interested to see how this next game goes. Adaptation, another important life lesson I feel like to learn and something that you can take from sort of esports or really any sport and apply it in real life. A hundred percent. If you, uh, it's about not giving up and, uh, you know, keep going and you will get better. Absolutely. Well, Damien, thank you very much for joining no me problems. up on stage. Again, we have to be maintaining that safe distance. So I'll give you the friendly wave and thumbs up thank from you. over here as we are getting ready to go for our second match of our best of three. As it was a bit of a... Uh, Interesting game number one. Did I just mute myself? I think I did. I muted the wrong mic. I'm not too sure what happened right there. That is A-OK, -okay, but we will be getting into game number two momentarily as we wait for the third member to jump in. We will start off our picks and bans once more. Game one obviously ended in that 30-30 tie. I know some of you farming simulator aficionados probably are thinking 30-30. That is the lowest scoring farming simulator game I have ever seen, and well, while you might not be wrong, again, it is worth noting, a lot of these players are picking up the game for the first time. It's kind of in that spirit of the Eka. Uh, we can bring as much as we can in a digital version, so it's really just a kudos to these students coming out here, giving it a go, trying something new, and then when you look into it a bit deeper, you realize, oh my goodness, there's a $1,500 prize pool, uh, $1,000 going to the winning school, 500 for second place. Obviously, this money is going into developing these up-and-coming esports programs for the school. So even though it's a lot of these students' first time playing, they still are playing for something quite important. And it's going to be an exciting match nonetheless as we are getting ready to go. We're already in our picks and bands. We can see very similar bands from the first game. I wish I could go into a bit more detail with all these tractors, but I can tell you a bit more about what they might be looking for. It's all about speed. Speed is the name of the game. I feel like if that's where each team was lacking, a bit, a little bit curious decision making as well. I think the big takeaway each of these teams have to take from that first one is committing to scoring points a bit earlier. I think both sides spent a little too long on the harvesters and not enough time collecting with the front loaders, getting those hay bales into the barn. Obviously, Yashi, that heroic effort at the end to tie it all up. He is going to be a player to watch, I feel like, in our next round. So. We'll be able to see if they can pick up, if they can adapt. I'm hoping to see each of these teams get at least that 100 points as more sort of passives are now getting locked in. Each side going for the bottleneck. Bottleneck helps you control those little bridges that you saw at the end, which can affect essentially, you know, how much points you can get, or more importantly, how much you can mess with your opponents. Because every time you sort of drive through that bridge and then the bridge goes up, it goes up for your opponents as well. And... Being able to sort of manipulate when they can and can't score points is a very important aspect of Farming Simulator 2020. That said, get ready, get set. It is time for game number two. Mary Burrow in the blue taking on TSS in red. Game one was a tie, but I still believe we're only playing three rounds. So very curious what happens if we sort of finish game three with a 1-1 scoreline. We'll have to get a little read from our refs at that. But maybe it will not happen. As you can see, everyone racing out to select their equipment. Kerrigan going straight for that harvester that is closest. It's not the widest, but that one has a fair bit of horsepower behind it. Meanwhile, on the other side, you can see Shaggy and Yoshi actually kind of going for the same bit of equipment initially and a little bit of miscommunication. Miscommunication, that is a new word. Coming from the blue side, Mary Bro, deciding, all right, how are we gonna approach it? Blondie will be the first one. Gets that green harvester, as you can see right there, a little bit wider than what was taken by TSS's. We'll get ready to get into the map itself. Gonna go ahead and you can see right here, Blondie 
getting to work. Yoshi again right behind on the Baylor, and this is sort of that one-two combo that we saw the uh, Maryboro side take in game number one. As you can see, Yoshi trying to line themselves up, making sure that they can get as much as possible, but it's... I mentioned this in between games. These tractors are hard to drive as Yashi just cannot seem to get a straight line going right now. Kind of stuck going in between. Hopefully, Yoshi will be able to fix it in a bit. Meanwhile, we can see Shaggy still sort of figuring out how his own tractor works. Got himself a nice front loader right there. Going to wait for the bailers of Yashi, who has been managed to straighten it up. So now I expect to see some hay bales eventually go through, although... You got to keep driving straight. I know it's difficult, but it's going to be super important. Meanwhile, over on the side of TSS, Kerrigan finally has himself in that harvester right there. Should be looking to get into it. At the same time, Hard Hardly has been doing a pretty good job, but Tobes accidentally turned left when he meant to turn right. So now it's just going for a merry old drive through the wheat. Um, should be able to righten themselves out. Although it looks like they're going to be taking the long way around. That first hay bale slowly coming out, but... Let me position actually right in front of the bridge and Tobes looking to just go ahead and get that first hay bale. And this is very, very important actually because the first hay bale does get you double points. And if Tobes can get that hay bale up onto that conveyor belt, that is 40 points then and there. And remembering how game one was 30-30, well, 40 points would have actually won the entire game. So I can understand exactly what TSS is going for. Kerrigan, meanwhile, as well, just going ahead and getting as much wheat as possible. Also, clearing out all the space around this little trailer right here, so we might be seeing a bigger grain push come from TSS. Game number one, the grain never really came into play. We'll see if that happens the other time around. Shaggy looking to be also going for that initial 40 points, but the first bail has already been secured. They didn't take the conveyor belt, instead going underneath, so it's only gonna be 20 points scored for the side of TSS, but it is a critical 20 points as Tobes already gets it through. And a little bit of a blow for Maryboro, but that's okay. Plenty of time to come back in this one as Yashi continuing to follow right behind. Continuing to follow right behind Blondie at this stage. As we, as we continuing with this one. Also, we just got a word on how the tie breaks are going to work. I will read them out. Like, essentially, with the tie breaks, it's, it's going to come down to point differential. Essentially, it's like whoever gets the most between, you know, the two sides, if it's still tied, we're going to, like, combine it all together and then figure out who wins it in that regard. So even if it does finish 1-1, well, we'll have a proper winner at the end of it all. So do not worry. We're not going to be playing four games. We are going to be sticking with three as Blondie as well. It's going to be clearing up some space around the trailer right there, bumping it a little bit, but that's all right. Not going to cause too much damage. Yashi as well, continuing to make those hay bales. Going to go ahead and actually break off of it, go ahead and open up the... Uh, grain trailer right there and that will be beneficial because as that grain starts to pull in perhaps we can see Maryboro actually start to get the multiplier running something that was lacking in the first round and whoop, gonna have to realign it right there second time's a charm Yashi you were clutch before are you gonna be clutch this time nope that was a little bit too hard all right third time's a charm not attached not, not quite attached oh it is attached all right there we go I thought it wasn't on that's all good as Blondie's gonna start to dumping some of that grain in there they'll be going for the multiplier meanwhile on the side of TSS, you can see more hay bales. Two of them, in fact, stacked on the back right there for Tobes, who's going to be beelining for the barn. But the third bridge just went up, and there's really no way to get through, at least just yet. Kerrigan and Hardly continuing to go ahead and harvest as much grain as possible. A lot of grain available for collection right now. And the longer that grain is left there, you know, again, it's all about efficiency in this game. And even this, I would question, probably is not the most efficient move right now. It's... You, it's okay to leave little patches here and there, but it's important is covering as much ground as quickly as possible. So it'll be interesting to see how TSS improves moving forward. And the grain has been dumped. Not a lot of grain quite just yet, as Yashi's going to continue to keep making hay bales around the trailer. Shaggy as well. Uh, trying to figure out how the front loader entirely works. Got to lower it. Not sure you can spike it from above, although, yeah, that's what happens. Oh, all right. Well, that's a way to do it. For all you farmers out there, you know, uh, take note. Uh, next time when you're collecting some of those hay bales, instead of going from underneath, come from above and spike it. I mean, you know, if it works in the video game, it works in real life too. Uh, hardly continuing to go ahead and just clean up everything around this barn. And I do like how TSS has prioritized the uh, wheat essentially closer to the barn itself. Tobes, as well, plenty of time to work with. Is going to, looking to start loading those hay bales. The question is, will Tobes go for the conveyor belt? 
Or will Tobes play it safe and go underneath? Well, he's going to go for the conveyor belt, flicking it up and on. And a little bit of a cheer happening. The pop-off, the style points coming from Tobes. But the thing is, is it all for naught? Because the hay bale falls towards the end. So an A-plus in presentation, but maybe a D-minus in terms of delivery. That said, the second hay bale will go through. So a 40 points now, a 30-point lead going for TSS. That next hay bale, I believe, will go just underneath Tobes, trying to decide where he wants to put it. We'll come back to see how that goes as we take a look on the other side. Shaggy has gotten over the bridge and whoop, a little bit too fast on the turn, loses the hay bale. This time coming from underneath. So we have learned from our misadventures from before. Oh, okay, swing and a miss. That's all right. These tractors, again, hard to control. So I do not be too harsh on these students as, you know what, if you've, this is your first time playing the game, trust me, it's, a, it's easier to drive a proper vehicle than it is to drive these ones. And that's where the challenge lies. As you can see right now, all right, we are uh, loading one grain harvester into the other grain harvester, but not into the trailer itself. A... Unique approach, not one that I've seen before, but, you know, teamwork, working together, and now Kerrigan should be able to open up this trailer. Only eight minutes to go, which means at any stage those drones can drop the power up, and this will be interesting. If a grain power up does get dropped, that could be beneficial for the TSS side if they are fast enough in getting that grain into the town and starting to work on those multipliers. Neither team really has made a play for the multipliers yet in this best of, and Shaggy, Still struggling with this same hay bale that we've seen before. It should be worth noted as well for TSS. That hay bale that we saw before from Yashi, it was put underneath. It didn't go on the conveyor belt, but a 50 to 10 lead right now in favor of TSS Shaggy. I feel like Shaggy's going to have to take the conveyor belt right now to bring it back within 20. Let's see if Shaggy is able to load it correctly. Loading is one of the hardest things to do in this game. Perfectly positioned. Just got to slowly back it off, and there you go. That's going to go straight in and bring us back within 20. Meanwhile... On the side of TSS, they have loaded their little trailer right now, and that's going to give them some of that multiplier. Now they just need to start getting, you know, those hay bales in, although you're going the wrong way. You actually need to take that to the town, or nope, okay, instead we're going to keep filling it up. As you can see, the drone has dropped the power-ups, and immediately they're taken. It's going to be the grain boost activated, so you got a couple of minutes to go ahead and get that grain all the way over into the town, into the little uh, harvest area right there, and start raising that multiplier. We'll see if TSS will be able to do it in time. Londi continuing to use that harvester, continuing to get those trails. You can see a fair bit of hay bales being collected. Oh, Yoshi! It's actually gotten a little bit of stuck at the moment. Oh, no! Nearly flips the tractor, but is able to hold on. Shaggy following suit. Just going to go ahead and collect that hay bale right there. Should be looking to deliver it back. Yoshi as well. This is a lot of hay bale right now. That is eight hay bales, which will be taken back. I believe, or actually, no, that's only four. My math is bad again. Yeah, yeah, but that's still four hay bales. And just think about it. If all four of those go on that upper conveyor belt, they're 20 points each. That would be a massive lead for Maribo at the pace that this game is going. Meanwhile, over at TSS, Tobes looking to get some points of their own. There's three hay bales right there that Tobes is going to be looking to carry over. It's going to go all the way to the dirt bridge at the far, far end. Kerrigan as well. This is so, so critical. It's going to get that multiplier going as soon as he can just get through the town, just trying to find the way through. It's a little bit deceptive where you have to go, but you actually have to drive all the way around. It's a trek. It's, it's a trek, but it is one well worth taking if you can get that multiplier bonus. Uh-oh, it looks like Yoshi may have accidentally unloaded the trailer a little bit too early. He needed to take that all the way through to the barn, but instead, kind of just blocking up some of the path. And at this stage, Maryboro. They're going to need to speed things up. Five minutes remaining. Toby has taken all of those hay bales all the way towards the barn. Oh, no! Another hay bale, unfortunately, falls a little bit short of making it to the top of that conveyor belt. Toby has been struggling, or Tobes, I should say. I keep calling him Toby, assuming that is their name, but that might not be the case. As we can see, the multiplier starting to come into effect. A three times multiplier right now in favor of TSS, just to the one times multiplier of Maryboro, and that is huge, because that essentially means for every one of these, that is equivalent of three that Maryboro has, and you can see all of them ready to start being loaded in. It does mean, however, a slower conveyor belt. As your conveyor belt goes faster, you know your opponent's does move slower. There's also that hay bale sitting right in front of the barn that eventually you would think TSS is going to want to push in. Back at the other side, Shaggy kind of getting stuck on the door at the moment. You can see one hay bale made it over. 
Not entirely sure how that happened, but the second one's still getting a little bit stuck at this stage. Kind of waiting patiently for the bridge to fall, but this is a lot of time being wasted, especially with only a one-time multiplier. Meanwhile, as well, you can see the overheating on the conveyor belt. This can happen when your conveyor belt goes too quickly. It overheats, and then it stops working. So if the side of Maribor wants to use the conveyor belt, they're actually going to need to get some grain through. But with your grain sort of sitting right here, and it's full. Look how much grain is in there, but there's not enough time for them to really collect on it. So unfortunately, Maribor stuck in a tough situation. You can see the hay bale starting to push through with that three times multiplier right there. And TSS continuing to push further. Further and further ahead. I have to feel like right now, unless something absolutely insane happens, TSS going to be taking game number two. Blondie racing right now to try and get any hay bale or anything going in their favor. I'm not really sure where Blondie's going, actually. There's, there's no vehicles that way. Just running into the yonder, Blondie. Run, Blondie, run. Back towards the barn. Shaggy just trying to score what they can. That will go through to make it a 40 to 80 game. But if you take a look at the Maryborough farm, there are no hay bales really close. They're all still stuck all back on the other side of this bridge, which is finally coming down. But Yoshi is going to go ahead and start trying to load. Meanwhile, on the side of TSS, you can see Tobes got himself some hay bales as well to capitalize on this three times multiplier. Hadri going to go ahead and come back as well. Under three minutes, it's time to really race and get those hay bales through. Hadri, you can't go that way. There's no bridge. You got to go the long way around at this stage. As you can see, all of the bridges are up. Topes still creating more hay bales with the baler, but it's time to cash them in. Only two and a half minutes to go. Kerrigan as well, just making hay bales, but they're going the wrong way. And there are so many hay bales still available. Really, it is up once again for Maribor to kind of come through with that clutch final performance if they're going to be able to get through at the very end. So Yoshi, just waiting for that bridge to fall, needs it to come down, needs to get one, two, three, four, five, all five of those in that lower barn. It could turn things around. Shaggy as well, struggling with that one hay bell, needs to get that into the barn at some stage. Two minutes. Will Maryborough be able to make that comeback? The bridge is down, but Yoshi is stuck. He's got an entire stuck underneath the railing of the bridge, and now it's starting to go up. Yoshi trying to get over the top, but cannot quite make it, and he's getting flipped back. Disaster for Maryborough, who was so close for making that comeback. As you can see, a very awkward situation for the blue side. He can't even get out of this tractor. That fall will break your ankles and just be painful all around. And this could be how Maryborough unfortunately drop game number two on the TSS side. They're continuing to get points. They're stacking it on. They've gotten to 100 with that three times multiplier. Blondie and Shaggy just watching poor Yashi stuck atop the bridge. So many hay bales underneath from Blondie just thinking, come on, lower so I can get through. Finally, the bridge is going to drop. There still is a minute left, but it is an 80-point differential. Yoshi still is kind of just blocking the way that tracker has to reverse, but I'm not really sure how you get through this one right now. Just a very, very tight situation for Maryborough. As we can see right here, ah, oh, yes. Taking a look, that is Shaggy, obviously. As we see over here, you can take a look. Yoshi's going up again! Oh no, Yoshi! Hang on, Yoshi! Oh no! <laughs> Just uh, not, not the situation you want to be. I like, I like how it's even gotten the camera to look at that weird angle. It's, ladies and gentlemen, Farming Simulator 2019. The, the realism in this game is absolutely astounding. I mean, don't you just hate it when you're out on the farm and situations like this come into play as a, a very awkward situation right here. 17 seconds to go before this one comes to its conclusion. As we can see, it will be a very, very comfortable victory for the side of TSS. Eventually, Yoshi will be let down off of the tractor. Shaggy going to join him on the bridge as well, but it matters not as the game comes to its conclusion. TSS get themselves the 160 to 50 victory. The important thing is that 100 to 10 lead as if it comes to be, you know, a blue side victory next time around, well, that 110 could be the difference maker. The big thing in that one, and really what I felt like pushed TSS to that victory was, of course, the wheat that got delivered. Getting that multiplier through Absolutely important, and we saw the bottleneck passive come into play, especially towards the end, as they were just able to really bottleneck the blue side, I think. 
It spoke for itself whenever you have a tractor stuck on a bridge elevated about 30 meters off the ground. Well, it sort of speaks to itself. Uh, that said, though, we're going to have ourselves another a little interview right now, this time with a teacher from TSS, the winning side right there. And apologies if I get your name wrong again. It was Kishi again? Kesh. Kesh, Kesh, just Kesh. Why did I add an I to the end of it? <laughs> I, just, I don't know. I, my apologies, Kesh, but thank you so much for joining me sort of behind that desk right now. And yeah, yeah. I have to ask the same question. First thoughts of seeing Farming Simulator in an esports environment. What do you feel of this game? This is my first time seeing the game, and I've got to say it's absolutely ecstatic. <laughs> like, in that last 30 seconds or last 10 seconds of the game, when you start seeing the boys <laughs> rushing for the barn, it's just everyone's off their seats. <laughs> yeah, it, it gets surprisingly suspenseful, especially, you know, with these lower scoring games. The players are still trying to learn it, and oh, as yeah. a result, it's a lot tighter. And it's that one little misstep that can be the difference between victory and defeat. Yep. And... This time around, TSS, you know, they kind of let it slip through their fingers game one, game two. Yeah. Talk about a comeback, like, in terms of play style. That's it. Well, they didn't know how to make the scoring, and they didn't know how to score the points. So now, I think when they did that fancy flip from Tobes, oh, everyone, <laughs> I was going off, and then I saw it fall, and I was like, ah, oh, you got too cocky, that's all right. But at the same time, though, I think my favorite part of that fancy flip was just being able to look over yeah. to the side and see his reaction. Obviously, you know, yeah. players learning for the first time, but as you learn these new mechanics, you get that actual pop-up, and... The enjoyment that we're seeing from the students on both schools, realistically, yeah. like, that's what this is all about, is it not? That's the endorphins that are rushing through their brains. That's what we want our kids to feel every time they play esports. And not just esports, I'd imagine, but essentially any sort of extracurricular yeah. activity. Definitely. And um, just bringing these skills back to the classroom, and bringing them back to their other sports and bringing them back home to their families and to tell the stories, that's... It'll be an amazing story when Toby goes back to the boarding house tonight. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that was when we heard the crowd here get the loudest when we saw that flip. Like, it was more exciting than the tractor getting stuck on the bridge. <laughs> and now another thing I wanted to ask, actually, because, you know, TSS has brought not one but two teams to oh, this yeah. event. Um, so I um, advertised it out in two weeks ago, and I had nine students interested in the sport, but three had to cancel just because they've got school tomorrow at GPS Sports. Um, but I'm glad we had a day team and we had a boarding team, and I'm saying hopefully they qualify today's match so they can go head to head that'd be amazing i mean that would be exciting because it would guarantee tss essentially oh. making it to that regional versus city grand final oh, yeah. now i want to kind of further develop that though because the fact that you had nine students you know volunteering for a game that i'm not sure the experience they might have with this one but just in sort of esports as a whole and what it means not only for your school but i suppose region or regional schools as yep. a whole because normally you would think esports would be more of a city thing, but yep. it looks like you guys have sort of jumped right into it feet first. Well, I asked a lot of the boarders um, who actually have farms at home and uh, do this type of work. I'm like, are you interested in playing um, Farming Simulator? And they said, um, well, we play single player. We don't know what 3v3 is going to be like, <laughs> and we're a little bit nervous. So um, I hope now that if they're watching the stream, they can see this amazing venue at um, Brisbane RNA Showgrounds. And maybe next year, um, that stand will be full up of uh, TSS students supporting us, which would be great. Uh, I think it would be absolutely amazing. Again, unique times we're in right now. Yeah. So there is a full spectator area right here, yeah. and it's beautifully oh, set yeah. up. Like, this stage is phenomenal. I mean, the amount of time and effort and energy, yep. like, just being put together by everyone to put this show on has been phenomenal. And for these students to get this stage oh, experience, yeah. I, I feel like it's something very unique. And as a teacher, like, what does it mean to be able to provide the students with these unique experiences? Well, these three boys, it's their first time ever being on a stage playing a computer game. They didn't expect this at all. Um, I just showed them a quick little picture before we left the bus, uh, got off the bus today, and we, they were like, oh, that looks really small. And then when they got in the venue, they were like, whoa, what's going on here? Yeah. <laughs> I have to admit, that was kind of my reaction as well when <laughs> yeah. I just came in through the doors and saw this oh. entire setup. So a big thank you to the Echo. Um, on that note, though, we're getting ready to go into our third and final match. You're up right now. 1-0. Oh. Yeah. Final words. What, final words of motivation for your boys. How do you think they're going to do it? What do you want to tell them? How are you going to push them over that edge? Just stay resilient, respect your other team, and make sure you choose the right, make the right choices, especially when um, you're farming. That's yep. it. I mean, I think that's an important life lesson across. Yeah. Like, if you're looking to get into the farming industry as a whole, make the right choices. Otherwise, <laughs> things can go pretty badly quite quickly. <laughs> To get your tractor stuck elevated 20 meters up on a bridge. <laughs> Anyways, thank you so much thank you. for joining me, and uh, good luck for the rest of the day. Thank you very much. Have a good night. All righty. On that note, we will be continuing, as you can see right here, a brief look at this beautiful stage and a briefer look at me and my beautiful face. Glowing pink, apparently. Pink's a good color. Who doesn't like the color pink? It's a light red.
been watching some Red vs. Blue. Anyways, we're about to get right back into the action. It is time for game number three. And again, that important differential right now is the fact that TSS is not only one game up, but they are also 110 points up. So, not only does Maryborough have to win this third game, but they have to do so by more than 110 points. And for a team that hasn't even scored a combined total of 100 points yet, I feel like that might be a tough ask, but we will still see how Maryborough will be able to approach this one and if they will be able to take it as going through these picks and bans. Again, the tractors just seem to be what everyone wants to get rid of during the pick and ban phase. Now, interesting to go for the tractors. Obviously, tractors are all about that speed, all about that positioning and the front loaders as well, how much they can carry while maintaining that momentum. And that's why it's so, so important. That's an interesting take right there. Again, sticking with that tractor approach. Now, a little bit of the elephant in the room for those of you who are a bit more accustomed to Farming Simulator is the idea of the Harvester Rush or essentially the Baler Rush. Uh, that is when one team is able to collect all the Harvesters and all the Balers at the start of the game before the other team can even, like, essentially grab them. Now, we know this is a legitimate strategy in the competitive environment. However, this Rush strategy has been disallowed for this tournament just because we want to really... Let the players experience the game, experience the decision making, go for that time management sort of approach. Uh, not to mention, you know, we want to show you full matches. Typically, that would not be the case, but there is a reason why none of these teams has sort of approached that strategy the, just yet. Um, we know it exists. We know it's an important part of everything. However, now we are looking to lock in those passives and Bottleneck, which has become an important part of the meta right now, it's not typically seen in competitive farming simulator meta, but it's being seen quite a fair bit within our event here today. The Young Farmers XP Esports Cup, again, provides, presented by Aero Energy. A big thank you to Aero Energy for putting this one on. I mean, in this event, well, they're the ones, you know, who say, you know what, that bottleneck passive? Pretty, pretty strong as we're getting ready to kick off yet another round here. It is our third and final game in the series between Maryborough and TSS. Who is going to take it? We are about to find out as onto the pitch we go. I keep saying pitch as if this is Rocket League, but this is not Rocket League. This is Farming Simulator. Yashi doing what he can. Just heading out for a nice drive racing forward. And whoa, hello, Grain. Not entirely sure why we wound up there, but that's all good. We are going to go ahead and straighten out this camera as soon as possible. Looking around in this one as everyone's getting a sort of sort of a feel for where we want to be. Here we are. I like my manual camera, I'm not going to lie. I know perhaps when you watch the Farming Simulator League, you get hardcore camera cuts following the action all the time. But I am the lone observer, and I like to keep things single, simple when casting as well. So I just control this one camera. It can go up and down a bit more, so don't worry. We're figuring it out as we go. As Speaking of figuring it out as we go, Maryboro a little bit slow in getting into the grain this time around. Shaggy just kind of pausing, waiting, deciding it's going to go follow Yoshi with a front loader. So I expect to sort of see a three-piece move forward in this one. Blondie, though, already starting to get those rows of grain down. However, it's on the far, far end of where you want to take it, so... It's going to be a long road if the side of Maryborough is want to get that first hay bale bonus. Meanwhile, on the side of TSS, you can see a very similar, similar situation to what we saw before. Hardly going to go ahead, take that harvester, drive on through. Tobes right behind with the baler and already has that first baler being made. And it's going to go over the bridge, definitely looking to rush that first hay bale in. But an important piece of equipment has been forgotten, and that is that front loader. I don't see it there, so I'm not entirely sure... How that hay bale, when it does come through, if it does come through, was there enough wheat? Baylor's not really doing much right now, so perhaps a little bit premature from Tobes. We will keep that updated as we move on. Yoshi continuing to get his own baler going, and you can see the front loader from Shaggy just waiting for those bales to go down, and Shaggy's going to try and race and get that first bale bonus. It is being sort of plopped out as we speak by Yoshi, as continuing to try and make more in the first bale does go through, so we won't be seeing the first bail bonus go over to Maryborough. Instead, it was done by the TSS side. Tobes was able to get it in. Who was I to doubt? Shame on me. Tobes getting that critical first 20 points, and now if you're on that Maryborough side, I want to see him work more on that grain harvester. Whoops, kind of dropped us a little bit low right there. My apologies, but I want to see him use this grain harvester. 
It wasn't really utilized last time as Shaggy might have that first hay bale right there, looking to line it up, spikes it through. Now has to make the long drive all the way to the barn. It will take about a minute or so to get their Tobes. Continuing to do a good job in collecting all of this uh, wheat and turn it into those hay bales. All this grain, I should say, my apologies. As you can see down here, double harvester in action, just clearing up as much of this wheat as possible, making so much grain. And I like how they are positioning it right in front of their barn. I feel like this could be a mistake potentially that the Maryborough side is making. Blondie possibly recognizing this is now trying to push back towards their own barn in this situation, but I don't know. I think as we get later into the game, we might see the effects of that come into play. Shaggy still trying to get that first bail over for the Maryborough side. And if he wants to equalize the score, well, they're going to have to need to put it on that conveyor belt, something that both teams have struggled with in the past. I love the double harvester approach right now. Just look at the efficiency between these two pieces of equipment. Look how wide they are able to take it. And that is a lot of wheat just being turned into grain. Unfortunately, only one harvester at this stage, but Tobes doing a good job in just driving in a straight line and collecting all of it. We can already see the hay bales just starting to be plopped out, and Tobes with two in the back of the vehicle will take that straight over to the barn. And again, TSS, each time, each game, they have looked stronger and stronger with their efficiency, stronger and stronger with their game plan, and it is paying off in terms of this small lead that they have accrued. Neither team yet has made a go for sort of the wheat farming, and I'm a little bit surprised that we haven't seen TSS actually go for the wheat as well, um, or I should say the grain, just because that was a key reason why they did win that last game. So the fact that they haven't gone for it just yet, I'm a little bit surprised, but Tobes more than happy to just back these hay bales into the barn, collect points while they can, start to build more and more of a lead, and put more and more pressure onto that Maryborough side. Yoshi and Blondie continuing. Now they're going to start going for the grain. And this is going to be critical for them. Obviously, the multiplier, very important. I think Maryborough felt the burn last time around, and perhaps they're going to put a bit more emphasis on this one as Yossi is going to be looking to link it up, open up that parp, and start, you know, harvesting some of that grain, get the multiplier going. Meanwhile, Hardly and Kerrigan, their goal, I think, is to just go ahead and just harvest all of the wheat on the back half of the farm right here. And then you have all of this grain to work with, maybe turn it all into hay bales as... Tobes has gone ahead, gotten a few more bales in there, 50 to 20, the current lead in favor of TSS. A very strong lead for them. If they can hold on to it, they will be advancing to tomorrow. As it is sort of a qualifying day, you win your best of three, you advance to tomorrow to that semifinals. And both semifinals and the grand final will be played tomorrow. It will be starting at an earlier time, might I add. So if you're enjoying this high school action, well, feel free to tune in at 12.30. Tomorrow, as we'll see, not one, but not two, but three series, as opposed to only the two we have today. Nine minutes remaining in this critical game three. Yoshi racing back to get himself a bailer. Nope. Is he going for the harvester instead? However, he won't be able to take it. You see those red lights? That means it is not available. That The, the, the only vehicle that's really available that he's looking for is all the way over here. Yoshi, you got to drive all the way across this field. Going to make that long trek across, and this is why it's important to pay attention to what vehicles your opponents have taken and which ones are still available for you. That's about a minute lost for Yashi and a minute that I'm not so sure that Maryborough can afford to give up. As we continue, Tobes again continuing to go ahead and just continuing to harvest those bales, get the balers going. Tobes definitely has the strategy of collecting two at a time, just getting it in. Uh, it seems as if TSS is just prioritizing points on the board more so than optimal efficiency with the points that they can collect. And again, it's the the, the harvester to harvester to um, trough strategy, but the trough isn't open yet. They still need to open up that little bit of trough right there so they can get the, the grain in so they can harvest it. And with eight minutes to go, I'm worried that the timing might not be there. As you can see, Hardly has gotten the tractor, one of the fastest ones in the game should be able to open that up, and then they'll start to collect the grain. I'm not sure why they're going harvester to harvester in that. It's, it's a unique approach. Not one that I'm used to seeing, but it's all good, as eventually they're going to go ahead and start loading. And that is a lot of grain they are going to be loading in. So this multiplier, again, is going to shoot up. It looks as if TSS, again, is going to be going for the three times multiplier. They were able to pull it off in game number two. And all right, well, that's all that they're going to use for now. So... Feeling confident that the rest should be able to go through at this stage. Kerrigan is going to go ahead, 
loan up that trailer and then drive it to the town. And then once that multiplier starts going through, well, that's going to be a lot of points potentially left on the table for Maryboro, who has not made a move yet to really get that grain through. They've opened it up. They've got a little bit of grain in there, but they're not looking to collect it in just yet. Both power-ups are available. I'd expect to see the hay bale power-up taking. Yep, the bale boost has been activated. So each team, as you can see, now has a three times multiplier for the bale. And I understand why Maryboro is going for that. I believe they've recognized that. Hold on. Once again, we're behind on that grain race, so we need to get as many hail bales in as possible before the multipliers really get out of hand. I'm no one really making that move just yet, though, unfortunately. Yoshi is the one who I think could be in prime permission, position, I should say, to do that, and is going to be racing to collect. Chaggy, a hay bale as well, once again struggling to really grab it onto that front loader. Going for the above spike down. Now, I was kind of joking before with the strategy, but Shaggy seems to like it. Instead of coming from the side, spiking it from above. And this is why you don't spike it from above. It's, it's actually, you know, not really efficient. And whoop, again, just sliding straight off. Shaggy, uh, frustrated with the situation, jumps out, bounces around like a typical farmer would when put into a tight situation. And it's just going to go ahead and jump into a harvester and said, you know what? I, I do better just harvesting the wheat than necessarily harvesting the wheat bales. Back over onto the red side of the farm. You can see hardly continuing to harvest that grain, continuing to make those grain trails. But with just under six minutes to go, perhaps it's time to start cashing in on these hay bales, especially with that three times multiplier down and on the farm. Yoshi, a couple of hay bales available now. I'm expecting it's going to try and take those in. You can see just locked up. And now it's going to go ahead and look to collect on those points. A 50 point lead currently for the TSS side. And with those 50 points, that's feeling pretty comfortable because it is not just 50. Realistically, it's an 160 point lead considering how game two went. And it's about to rise as Tobbs looking to collect on two more hay bales and really put Maryboro further and further down in this one. Slowly getting the hay bales into position. I believe Tobbs has been backing it through in the past and I expect that's what we're gonna see right here. Has to be very, very careful, though, because it's very easy to get that baler stuck. Ooh, just like that. Just like that. Wasn't the cleanest one, so we're going to try again. Entry attempt number two. Backing it in, backing it in, and nope. All right. Third time's a charm. Oh, now there we go. Just push them in. All right. That's a way to do it, and that is a lot of points. However, this is actually pretty critical right now. As you can see, the multiplier bonus has gone down, but because... TSS was able to get some grain in before. Their multiplier actually is continuing to be higher than the side of Maryborough. And you can see that 2.8 to 1.2, a massive advantage to the team that is already taking game one to the team that is already ahead. And this is looking very, very dire, unfortunately, for the Maryborough side. They only have four minutes to get about 200 points at, at least. At least, because TSS, they're just going to be able to add to that lead. You can see Tobes already getting that harvester back onto the farm, looking to collect more. Kerrigan as well with their own harvester. That's a couple of hay bales right there, although that back one does drop off. Kerrigan, I still expect, will be taking that bale to the barn. And with the 2.8 times multiplier, i thinking as if TSF most likely has taken this one through. You can see right here where all of that grain got dropped for that 2.8 multiplier advantage. A little bit unfortunate for the uh, Maryborough side that they um, didn't really, again, for the second game in a row, they got so much grain in their tractor, and they're still adding to it as if they're going to be able to cash it in. All three members of Maryborough right now just stuck in the center of the farm, but there's only three and a half minutes left to collect on these hay bales. And at the pace that they're going, I feel like they need to move and move quickly, and you can see all the hay bales just scattered around the Maryborough farm. They're, they're too far away. They need to get them into that barn. Meanwhile, TSS, you can see they're just adding more and more points in this situation, both hardly as well as Kerrigan just dumping those hay bales in. They're not bothering with the conveyor belt because they know they have such a lead, although Hartley is still going to go for it. Trying to back in a unique approach instead of coming from in front, coming from behind. Uh, I mean, you know, if it works for you, it works for you, and it's on the conveyor belt, or is it? Okay. I'm not really sure what physics are allowing the hay bale to do that. I'm going to go ahead and start flipping its way up the conveyor belt. Does it flip again? Nope. All right. Ooh, but is it straight? Oh, this is going to be tense. We'll come back to that. Keep an eye on it from down below. 
You know what? No, we're going to zoom right in. Forget keeping a distance. We're going to just get really... POV hay bale cam. This is what it looks like to be a hay bale going up a conveyor belt. All jittery-like. <laughs> Eventually, it will make its way up as Tobes is actually going to be looking to collect a few more. Oh, three more hay bales just stacked up, ready to go. Two minutes left remaining in this one. TSS, a fantastic lead that they have as eventually that hay bale does it get through that doorway with the 2.8 multiplier. About to find out, does it squeeze in? I think it will. Moment of truth, it does. 158, again, a massive lead and now hardly going for a stack on there once even more points it looks like the bottom one might go in but the top one gets in its way and okay it's like watching two slow planets in orbit right now and we'll come back to see how that one follows through meanwhile back on the team from behind Maribo the team racing to try to get back into it that conveyor belt will be going so fast at this stage but only one hay bale again shaggy with the top down approach Again, for all you farmers out there, um, I I'm curious, is this how you sort of collect your hay bales? Just spike it from above and then push it with the tractor? Bail passive. Oh, has just been secured right now for the side of TSS as well. as. Whoops, sorry, my apologies. Just went straight through that barn. And oh, no! <laughs> Falling hay bale actually lands on Kerrigan. This is why OH and S exist. That could have been a very dangerous accident, but instead... More points going in with that multiplier. That's it. The grain has gone through for the side of Maryborough. So they are starting to get their own multiplier back. But with the state of this game, they need about 10 hay bales, I feel like. Or at least, you know, six or seven to go up on that conveyor belt. And that's assuming that TSS won't be able to get any through themselves. Multiplier, multiplier now in vantage of Maryborough. But it could be too little too late, as you can see. TSS continuing to just put more and more hay bales through. Back on to that blue side. There's no one near the barn. There's nowhere near enough time. It is going to be TSS advancing to day two, making it to the semifinals, or if you really want to get specific, to the regional finals. Congratulations, TSS. You advance through in the Young Farmers XB Esports Cup presented by Aero Energy. That is the win as a little bit of a celebration. Handshakes going around on that red side right there. And Unfortunately for Maryborough, it is a bit of a one-and-done situation. They made it close. We almost saw the crazy comeback, specifically in Game 1. However, this wasn't enough to push through. At the end of the day, the more adaptive team was the one that got the victory, and it was TSS. They were the first ones to really harvest the grain and really put that multiplier into effect. Their time management was that little bit more effective as well. And as a result, they did get that victory. Now, I have with me the team captain, actually, of TSS joining me here on stage after what was a very exciting victory. Now, I have to apologize. I don't quite know your name, so would you like to introduce yourself? Um, I'm Hayden, and yeah, I was the captain for TSS boarding. So what was your name in the game itself? Uh, Carrigan. So you were Carrigan. Okay, yeah. so... I noticed something that was unique about your team was everyone seemed to have their own predefined roles each time coming into it. Was that something you had pre-discussed, or was it sort of like, I'm the closest to a harvester, I'll be harvester man this yeah, time? Yeah, no, we um, basically set off our previous skill before the game, um, who was doing what roles, and we set like a little game plan, went out there, did it, and as a result, it worked perfectly. Absolutely. Now... There was a big difference, I feel like, in your side as well, in between game one and into game two. Game one was a bit of a struggle trying to figure everything out. Game two, it yeah. came much more together. Was there a specific reason for that? I know your teacher said before it was the point system or... Yeah, I think we um, kind of halved a bit more than we um, managed, like, transport. So we lost that bit there, but good job to the other team with that quick snag. But, yeah, that was pretty, <laughs> pretty fun. All right, so next thing I want to ask, um, I suppose that eSports, obviously... For older people like myself, it's always kind of like a surprise to see it in high school, but yeah. you're living it right now. What's your sort of take on the high school esports program? Like, is it something that you see the value in, something you're enjoying as a student itself? Oh, this is amazing. I didn't pitch myself doing esports, so Farming <laughs> Sim gave it a go, and like the look of all this is cool. Yeah, it's actually quite amazing. Yeah. Now, sort of a side question, and maybe a little bit off topic, but I'm like super curious. My eyes just keep getting drawn. <laughs> To all the badges and pins you have on there and like, you know, on stage, do you want to sort of like explain them? See if you can like maybe show them off on the camera a little bit. Oh, these, these ones here are all house points, like, mm -hmm. um, like stuff during the year. We get points for doing certain sport events. These two are sport and then this is just a um, top 20 year grade thing. 
cool. And the Canadian flag? Oh, we had an exchange student, and that uh, was like a little. Yeah, reward. I mean, look, the North American in me is just always going to be drawn yeah. to something like that. So, before we head to our break, one last question. You know, it was a good victory today. I'm sure you're feeling good. How confident are you going into game two and going to that regional final match? Oh, I'm not going to get too excited, not going to jinx myself, but we're just going to go in there, stick to the game plan, and see how it goes. Awesome. Well, that's good to hear. And thank you for joining me up here on stage as well. However, it is now time to take, unfortunately, a quick little break before we continue with our events here today. Again, a big congratulations to TSS on their victory over Maryborough. And a big thank you to Maryborough for signing up and competing and joining us here today as well. That said, after our break, we will have our second match between Kelvin Grove State College and Forest Lake over in our city division. So don't go too far. More of the Young Farmers XP Esports Cup presented by Aero Energy when we return from break. See you soon. everyone, join me this August when we explore 10 farms across Queensland and introduce you to the people who run them. That's Eka 2020 online.
what you want Let's have a bit of fun till I downfall My love, if you feel like I do right now Don't say you're on the run to the other side My love, you say you wanna try But you never do Sugar, there's a reason why we live is Mel Bottle and welcome to Paws and Claws. I want to find out what it takes to win a blue ribbon as a dog shower at the Echo. back to the Young Farmers XB Esports Cup presented by Aero Energy and we're back after having witnessed one very very unique game of Farming Simulator 2019. I think it was very exciting nonetheless as we saw TSS Borders get just barely over the top of Maryborough and I, I suppose it was like a 2-0-1 score line. I don't know that first game super exciting ended in a tie. However right now joining me is one Megan from Earnshaw 
who also played earlier today, unfortunately not on stream, however, turns out still went all well for you. Yeah, it did. They did very well. Um, we won two out of three, so they're very happy with themselves. Yeah, so two out of three does mean that you will be advancing to tomorrow, and I believe you were one of those other regional schools as well, correct? Or were you, and uh, that means you will be going up against TSS Borders, or? Um, we were the city school, actually. Oh, you were, yeah. oh, my, well, my apologies. <laughs> that gets you going against the winner of this match. Yes, we will. We'll be playing Ooh. against these guys. Very interested to see how they go. So are you going to be, you know, taking notes on the sly, getting ready, getting the prep in? I think so, yeah. Oh, smart move. <laughs> now, it's something I've been asking, I think, a few of the guests that we've have up here on the desk, and just getting that sort of teacher's perspective mm -hmm. on this rise of esports, especially in high school. Yep. What is your sort of take on all of this? It's been really fascinating to see the uptake from students um, and from parents, teachers. Um, we have at our school a something we call Da Vinci's Workshop, which is our STEM hub, and a lot of our esports happens in that space. Um, and we have a lot of kids that just love to come in and play at lunchtime. It's been really positive for kids who um, struggle in other areas in terms of team sports, and they've really learned a lot of team skills and strategy and ways to work together through the esports. It's been really fantastic to see kids being able to develop those skills if they're not, particularly if they're not so strong in um, athletic sports. Yeah, it's another avenue essentially, I mm. suppose, of building those social skills that, again, might not always be applicable depending on, you know, limitations perhaps to athletics. Obviously another important of it though is that idea of balance because mm. you're not necessarily get that physical exercise, you still will need to find it in other aspects as well. Is that something yeah. as well that your school promotes? Yes, uh, we try and do some athletic, uh, sorry, uh, some fitness things as part of our training where we can uh, mm -hmm. as much as possible, yeah. So now for the students themselves, the ones who have been able to come here, play, get that victory, how were they sort of selected? Because again, we've sort of seen a wide range of skills. Some players a bit more familiar than the game and others, some learning the fact that there's multiplayer for the first time, some learning that the game exists for the first time. Yes. What sort of skill line does uh, your school come into bringing into this? We're a very small school, so... Um, we don't have a lot of students to pick from, <laughs> but we have very, very keen students who are keen to just put their hand up and give it a go. So when this one came up, I just went to the kids that I know are really keen gamers and keen to try something new. And that's the team we brought today was a team of, um, of boys in particular who are very keen to give something new a try. And I mean, so far the results did sort of pan out, mm. did advance to tomorrow, but I guess sort of building upon that though, because, you know, smaller school yet still recognizing that esports is sort of this growing sort of industry and a growing avenue perhaps for students. What other events and games do the students sort of partake in? Uh, so we've been part of a League of Legends um, tournament and that's been a lot of fun. We started with one team last year, Stud Small, and we've got two teams this year, maybe even three next year, we'll see. <laughs> um, so that's been a really good um, building point for us and we've got some very keen ones, very keen to come through and join in there. Um, we, at the moment we have uh, very keen to join some other esports. We decided to use this year as a year for students to train and learn some skills in that and hoping to join some more in other avenues such as particularly playing with things like the Nintendo Switch and moving mm. into more console games as opposed to PC games. Excellent, excellent. Mm. So one last question before I unfortunately need to move things along as it mm. looks like our teams are getting ready they to go are, in yeah. this one. What will be the future for Earnshaw? Not in terms of just necessarily tomorrow and their successes, perhaps, or, or failures, we'll see. <laughs> but just in terms of, like, I suppose, Earnshaw's esports program as a whole, where do you see it growing and developing from here? Um, for us, we've started integrating it into an option in, um, a, in, that they can take instead of inter-school sport, uh, mm -hmm. which has been really good because there's many kids who inter-school sport they struggle with for various reasons. Um, so we've been moving in that direction and running intra-school tournaments in different ways. We're also a school that's actually prepped to year 12. So at the moment, it's a program only running in a high school, but some of our um, grade fives and sixes have particularly expressed an interest in running some things at their, at their level at their age. Um, and they're very keen, particularly because they love that team mindset. Um, and that's really something the teachers are really keen for the kids to see. They're at a stage where they're starting to see outside of, developmentally starting to see outside of their own little world and starting to see how they impact others a lot more this is something that really can show them how they can, how their behaviour and what they do impacts others as well. And esports has been something really good for them to see that. Well, that's actually pretty exciting stuff. Mm. And again, you know, if they're learning those skills earlier, then it leads to further development mm. as, you know, they progress in what other skills, hobbies they decide to partake in. And again, similarities to traditional sports as well, when, you know, you start at your under 10 soccer and then mm. see where that takes you eventually yeah. as you progress. 
Excellent. Well, thank you very much, Megan, for joining me. And again, good luck tomorrow. Um, Thanks. Let you get back to your note taking right now because I'm sure there's <laughs> going to be a, quite a fair bit that you're going to need to do to it. when studying these teams. That said, we are now going to be looking at our upcoming matchup. It will be Kelvin Grove State College taking on Forest Lakes in this one. It will be Kelvin Grove in blue. Forest Lakes will be in red, as you can see right here. Both of these schools actually... I'm not sure how officially the rivalry would be. Uh, we were talking League of Legends just before with Megan right there. Uh, I've seen these two schools go at it uh, in the same tournament. I, I've never actually think I've seen this matchup before. Kelvin Grove, they are a school that has traditionally done well in terms of esports. In fact, they actually took the uh, Queensland League of Legends High School Championship last year. Uh, fell a little bit short this year. Forest Lake, another school as well that definitely has been promoting esports in the past. So... High expectations for this matchup as we should be getting ready to jump in now to kick off our pick and ban phase between these two sides. Trying to subtly give the little thumbs up over to them so they should be able to jump in. And here we go. Everyone is in on that Kelvin Grove side. We have Boo Radley, Danny Boy, and Useless Snow. On the side of Forest Lakes, it is Blobman, Sponkle, and Philly Left. Very unique names, very fun names actually for this one. And I'm excited to see what sort of play style each of these teams will bring to the table. Now we saw two very inexperienced teams uh, in our first series today, but at the end of it all, it was a case of TSS able to adapt quicker and wound up taking that victory for these two right now. I, I don't really know entirely what their experience is. I think we will be finding out very quickly into this one. Also, I want to throw a special shout out right there to Boo Radley. Uh, I believe it is To Kill a Mockingbird a reference right there, and one of the best books in existence. Uh, my mom's favorite book, as a matter of fact, so I actually like seeing that name. I don't know, something nostalgic, as we are here with, again, a matchup in the City Division. The winner goes up against Earnshaw, who did win 2-1. to one. It's debatable whether or not that was 2-1 to one or 3-0, though. I've heard there's been some sort of questioning on that, but the fact that they won the first two games was enough to push them through. Harvester Rush was the reason why they did lose the third game, but Harvester Rush, again, within the rules, just for this tournament and this tournament alone, not something that these sides will be partaking in. Again, it's so that the teams can properly experience it in the game. I know when you watch that Farming Simulator Esports League, Harvester Rush or Baylor Rush is a legitimate strategy. I still call it Zerg Rush because I guess I'm an esports purist at heart. However, not the case for this one. We're all about having fun here today, despite that 1K prize. Actually, 1.5. K prize pool for that winning school. $1,000 for the winning team out of it all. Not just this matchup, but the entire tournament. $500 go to second place. This money, of course, being used to help develop these growing esports programs. Furthermore, I would like to thank the Computer Alliance for supplying all of the equipment being used today. ZQ Racing for giving me a chair that I can sit comfortably in and cast these games from. I really, really do enjoy both of these sponsors, so thank you for helping put this together. That said, it's now time to get on to the farm as we are underway for game number one in our second best of three, our second qualifying match for the afternoon. It is winner take all, single elimination, so a fair bit still on the line in this one as everyone comes pouring on in. You can see right now, Useless Snow going straight for that Harvester as well. Philly Left going to be going for a Harvester. So it seems like we have these predefined roles already. Jump on the platform, secure that piece of equipment for yourself. That is the go. I have regained control of the camera. Excellent. This is what we want. Boo Radley as well getting going for the Harvester right here. And nope, they lost out on it at the last second. And again, a quick reminder, the way how these pieces of equipment work at the start, it is entirely symmetrical with your opponents on the other side. And it turns into one of the ways that you can mess with the opposing team by being the first ones to get to a piece of equipment, securing it for yourself. It means that your opponents are not able to lock it for yourself. And this is sort of what we meant before by the Harvester war, um, Rush or by the Baylor Rush. If you collect all the Harvesters and the Baylors and it put your opponents in a position where they can't get any, well, the game automatically ends because, well, you can't harvest those hay bales, which you need for the points. As this is a points-based game, the more points you get, well, you win. If you have the most points, you get points by taking those hay bales over to your team's colored barn, as you see right here, or the red one over there on that opposite end. However, there are other factors in play. You can also go ahead and harvest grain by loading it in this tractor here and taking it 
all the way to town, dumping it in there. And then that little multiplier number that currently says times two, well, it will go up, your opponents will go down, and you get more points for each hay bale that you score. On to the match itself, however. Double Harvester being used at the moment by Forest Lakes. Interesting that they are working sort of opposite ends of the pitch at this stage, although I'm sort of looking for Philly left. Where is the third member? All the way back here, who is also harvesting. So three harvesters being used. And this is actually pretty critical because it does mean only one harvester will be of only one harvester will be available on the blue side. As you can see right here, there is that one harvester being used by Boo Radley up above and immediately does have the baler following just behind in this distance. So the two of them working together right now and they will be getting those hay bales dumped out and right in front of the barn as well. A strategy that did get adapted eventually by TSS. I think this is something that Kelvin Grove may have learned watching these first matches. So I like the implementation right now. They're going for the grain, going for the wheat closer to their barn. And then you have useless snow right behind the third member just going to go ahead and start collecting those hay bales. I, once again, important to remember that the third hay bale, or sorry, the first hay bale. Why did I say third? The first hay bale is the one that is worth double points. You get it on the conveyor belt. It's actually worth 40 points. And with these low scoring games because of newer teams, that is actually worth a fair bit. So... I do believe Yusuf Snow will be looking to sort of rush that first hay bale through. It doesn't look as if anyone on the side of Forest Lake has made any movement there. Instead, they are still going hard, three harvesters, although Philly Left actually is going to be looking to sort of jump the harvest straight from the harvester into the sort of collection agency right there and maybe get that multiplier going a bit early. Let's see if it drops out. I'm not sure I've actually seen too much of this, but down it goes. And because it's sort of not in the trailer, okay, it's still effect, comes into effect, so already getting the multiplier going, and that's all well and good, and it will actually negate what could have been 40 points going over to Useless Snow on this initial sort of conveyor belt at this stage, and eventually Useless Snow is just going to go ahead and drop it. Drop it. Drop it. You can do it. Slowly back it up. Oh, 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 not, not quite. Second attempt. Easy does it. The easy. 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 There you go. And look how straight that is as well. Useless Snow will be getting that first hay bale in for the side of Kelvin Grove as eventually it will find itself sliding in. Unfortunately, it won't get the full 40 points, but 38 still strong nonetheless as we take a look back over at the side of Boo Radley and Danny Boy. They're continuing to make all of these hay bales and they're kind of getting scattered all throughout the farm. No one really able to follow through and sort of collect them all at this stage. So hopefully eventually someone will be starting to pick them up. I'd like them a bit closer to the barn as well, but that's all well and good. Let's take a quick look over at the Forest Lake side. Kind of slowly make our way over here. Sponko and Blobman again continuing to go for the harvesters. And we've nearly gone five minutes into this first game and only harvesters have really been used by the side of Forest Lakes. Uh, eventually we do now see Sponkle on the baler and I believe that is the same Sponkle that plays League of Legends as well, if I am not mistaken. So interesting to see right here as Blobman continuing to harvest, continuing to get all of this grain down onto the farm. But look how much grain is still there that needs to get bailed, and this still needs to be taken back to the farm as well. So a fair bit of effort still to go as Danny Boy and Boo Radley continuing to keep getting those bales placed down, still waiting for them to be collected. I'm kind of curious where Useless Snow has wound up at this stage of the game game we should be able to find them right now Ooh, a little bit of in the player cam so they should be able to zoom it out there is useless snow and a bit of the tractor as well that's oh, not the button i meant to hit my apologies go right back okay well anyways boo radley and daddy boy continuing on as they go the uh, control's not really playing nice with me right now I'm not entirely sure why but that's all good as you can see just pretty very, very tight play at this stage. And what I'm liking, and the big difference between both of these farms, as you can see, Kelvin Grove, no grain left on this farm right now. Whereas you take a look over at Forest Lake, it's just grain for days. And they're still sort of trying to get the baler going now with Sponkle. Also, what's interesting is, yep, now they've got, you know, that tub open and they're going to start. Oh, a little too fast. You snow. Hit the brakes. Hit the brakes. There you go. Stop it up. Boo Rally is going to start dropping some of that grain right back into this tractor right here, which he will take all the way to town and really get that multiplier back in favor, one would think. And oh, no, 
Boo Radley starts turning a bit before I think Useless Snow is ready, so the synergy not quite coming together. Still hay bales just scattered all over this blue side farm as we take a look back over to the side of Forest Lake and you can see Sponkle starting to make a bit of a move right here, trying to go ahead and take some of these hay bales to get some points on board. Take advantage of the small multiplier, perhaps, that Forest Lake has for themselves. So, uh oh, did he stall out? Why did he stop moving? Oh no, he's going in reverse now. All right, interesting strategy. Trying to line it up, perhaps. I'm not, not too sure what the go is. Right now, Sponkle taking their time to decide. All right, we're going to keep going in reverse. Fair enough. Billy left, has gone ahead and now has opened up that trailer in the center. And I expect Blobman now is going to be putting a lot of grain. That is full of grain right now in the harvester right there. And Philly Left is going to try and get that trailer in a strong position just to collect all of this grain and fill it up nicely. Back on the other side, again, you can just take a look at Danny Boy and Boo Radley continuing to work as a pair. It's really all on useless snow that the captain and how he's sort of approaching this one, as you can see, just working together, Boo Radley, Dumping all of the grain right over there for uh, Harvest Snow. And, I mean, this is, this is teamwork right here. This is three people working together as a team. And they continue to plop these hay bales down. Now, we are at the stage where we will eventually see the drone, the power-ups come into play, I should say. So the drones do drop the power-ups. And they're really, really close to the side of Kelvin Grove. If I'm this Kelvin Grove side, I'm thinking I'd almost want to collect the bale one right now and start really trying to cash in on those hay bales just because if you look over at the side of Forest Lake, they don't really have any hay bales anywhere near their barn and they could take a huge advantage of that three times multiplier. Instead, Danny Boy is just continuing to plop them down all over everywhere on this farm. Only about seven minutes left and instead it goes to be a bale boost activated by the red side. So it's Forest Lake's activating the bale boost and that's a little bit of a surprise as well because... They don't really have any hay bales near their barn, so I'm not sure they're going to be able to take full advantage of that three times multiplier just yet. Uh, Radiant is driving himself in that baler at this stage. As, as they're continuing with this one right now, so Sponkle is continuing to go through. And I do apologize. I do have the sides. The um, I've been saying the sides the wrong way throughout this one. So it's actually Kelvin Grove in red, Forest Lakes in blue. Apologies for that. The notes I have in front of me lied to me. Shameful. Uh, anyways, again, uh, apologies for that, and apologies for the shaky gram earlier. You know, it's uh, first time actually casting this game and working the camera at the same time, so. Man of many talents, apparently, but I'm learning how to use them on the fly. Back to the action at hand, as we can see Forest Lake continuing to farm up. A big apology to getting the schools wrong for the entire first two-thirds of this game. Awkward, I know, as Boo Radley is continuing to fill up the tractor, as you can see right here. So that could be a huge multiplier put into effect. But again, as long as the bale activator has been put into place, do you really need to be focusing this hard on trying to get that grain through? That's what I'm a little bit confused about. Continuously, though, Kelvin Grove, they are still sort of struggling to really get any hay bales anywhere near their own farm. If you take a look at the positioning of everyone as well, Blobman is continuing to use that harvester, and he's getting further and further away. Billy Left has gone to dump off some grain, and that's all well and good, except for the fact that the baler power-up has been put into effect, so we're not really going to see that grain come into play until actually probably after it follows through. But when you look at the multiplier, you can sort of see um, next to the three times multiplier, you can see the 70% and the 170%. That is the speed of the conveyor belt, and that's a good way to sort of figure out how the high their multiplier actually is at the moment. The lower that percentage is, that means the higher their multiplier is going to be. And as soon as the power-up does finish, it comes into fruition. And yeah, 2.7 multiplier right now in favor of the red side of Kelvin Grove. And that is huge. This is now the time to really start getting those hay bales into the farm, but they haven't made any motion to do so just yet. And it's really coming back to hurt them at this stage. I do believe Philly Left has got himself a front loader and should be looking to start getting those hay bales through now. But I mean, if we're looking at the positioning on the farm itself, definitely advantage does seem to be in favor of Forest Lakes, as we can see right here. Boo Radley still using that harvester. That's a lot of grain still about, but more importantly, Danny Boy is actually going to be pushing all that grain back to try and get the multiplayer back in their favor. Useless Snow, this is huge. This is what could be the difference maker in this game. This tractor loaded up with seven hay bales. The bridge is down. Now, this is an interesting situation because the multiplier still isn't necessarily that great for the Forest Lake side. However, 
If he is patient, perhaps he can wait for Danny Boy to get the multiplayer back higher, or will use the slow just try to capitalize on the points now available. Still zero points taken for the Kelvin Grove side, so I'm very curious to see what Kelvin Grove will be doing right now. I mean, they still aren't even near the farm at this stage, as we see Useless Snow starting to sort of line up that farm at this stage as we take a look, getting ready to see what he is going to be bringing in. Just going to unload all of those hay bales down right now and start trying to get them in. Time going to be a bit of a factor. Only 3 minutes and 20 seconds left in this one. As you can see, all the way down at the other end, Danny Boy is going for all of that multiplier at this stage. Curious to see how much he will be able to get through in this one. Is here not? Yeah, here we can see. About to dump it all in, one would have to think. Back on their side, Yusuf Snow is going to start loading those hay bales. This is going to be super, super critical. Meanwhile, on that other side, Kelvin Grove, they haven't really started making that move yet. And that's what has me really, really concerned. As you can see, Danny Boy right here. We'll try to figure out how to dump the grain, actually. So this is getting a little bit awkward right now. Trying to figure out the controls. As I mentioned before, these are players of varying skill lengths. And this is starting to run out of time. He really needs to start figuring out how to dump that grain. And, okay, that's the cover. Getting closer. He's trying to figure it out. And eventually, you know, I, he has two and a half minutes. I believe he'll figure it out at the end of the day and eventually get it in. As we take a look back over at the side, Philly left starting to actually move towards the barn right now, as we can see, Useless Snow, yes, starting to load it in himself. Trying to figure it out how to push that one through. Wait on the other side, as we're going to have to kind of zoom down. Apologies for the quick zoom to the other side of the farm. Sponkle, this is a unique way to push hay bales forward. Instead of really impaling them on, just, just push them. Just push them along. Again, proper farming etiquette right there done by Sponkle, and he's just going to leave it sort of out in the middle of the field. The bridges are all up, although there is that other path all the way down here that might be need to be taken. Philly left, though, has a lot of hay bales for themselves, and they're going to wait for that bridge to drop. Only a minute 40 remaining, and this is going to turn into a proper hay bale race to load it through. You can see already Useless Snow has started actually loading in some of those hay bales, so it does look as if the blue side is looking to start pushing them in. You can see right here Useless Snow. I'm going to go ahead and try and jump it onto that conveyor belt, which will move quite quickly. So that will mean that Kelvin, Forest Lake sorry, will be getting those points quite quickly. Just got to make sure it's probably lined up. A minute 14 remaining, and this one is going to come down to the wire. That is almost for certain at this stage. As we watch over on the side, unfortunately, for Kelvin Grove, they still don't have any hay bales actually in the farm area. They're down in points. They're not really scoring any time, but Philly has finally got that bridge fall. It's finally taking those seven hay bales through. The multiplier still on their side. But finally, 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 it does appear as if Forest Lakes have been able to figure out how to dump off all of that grain. As you can see, it's just pouring on through, and that means that multiplier, that big advantage, starting to no longer come into play for the side of Kelvin Grove. They only have 30 seconds to try and get as much into the barn as possible, yet they're still looking to possibly use the conveyor belt. I'm not sure they have the time for it. Sponkle needs to start getting those hay bales into the barn, but on the other side, you can see Forest Lake score was slowly rising. 20 seconds to go. I don't think it's going to happen, and we are going to be seeing a Forest Lake victory zero points scored, perhaps, on the side of Kelvin Grove. Their eyes were bigger than their stomach. And maybe Sponkle can get something through. Five seconds remaining, but even so, they're just trying to shove it in. Just push it in, force it, make it happen. They get ten points. They got something on the board. So at least there is that. However, the victory will go over to the side of Forest Lakes as they take game number one, 85 to 10. Each side going for the transport company. Each side using that trailer to their advantage. However, it was the speed at which Forest Lakes sort of attacked the farm how they angled themselves, how they went for the grain closer to the barn, and how they were able to actually get some hay bales through. It was just a case, unfortunately, of Kelvin Grove. They were going for a big push at the end, but they were a little bit too slow in executing it, and that is kind of why they weren't able to finish it. Also, it should be worth noting, three hay bales, um, sorry, two hay bales used by the Forest Lake side on to the conveyor belt, zero being used by Kelvin Grove on the conveyor belt, and the conveyor belt, that's where you see that multiplayer come into play, so... Very, very interesting knowing that the Forest Lake side is able to use those conveyor belts to their advantage. That kind of tells me that in the future, yes, it was 85 points this first game, but they're going to improve. They're going to get stronger, and I expect that score to start going up very, very quickly. A lot of pressure right now 
on the side of Kelvin Grove as they are going to need to essentially win two games in a row after only putting 10 points on the board. Now, their mistakes can be easily fixed. It's just better efficiency and, you know, kind of pulling that go trigger a little bit earlier on those hay bales to make sure they actually get a proper amount of points onto the board. Uh, Transport Company, I think, was a good call for both these teams, uh, especially if they're going to go for that late push with the hay bales. So I'm very excited to see them use that now. Normally is where I'll be saying, hey, guess what? It's now time for a very special interview, and then we'd be cheering and we'd be chatting with the teacher. That's not going to be the case, so you're going to have to put up with my beautiful voice as we quickly get into our second game. Players getting ready is hopefully we will be quick into our second match. Now, once again, these players obviously are not necessarily, you know, Farming Simulator Pro League. I, I'm not sure there are any Germans playing, as Germany just seems to be, you know, the place to be if you want to watch the Farming Simulator Pro League. But this is Australia. This is the Royal Queensland Show, also known as ECA, being presented to you digitally this year in 2020. Kind of crazy to think that in, throughout the entire history of the ECA, only three times had it not, has it not actually been in place. Uh, back in 1918 during the Spanish flu, during World War II as well, when this area was kind of used as a makeshift military base, to my understanding, and this year. But what makes this year special compared to those two times in the past, everything is done digitally. So we are still able to present to you a Royal Queensland show just in a format that we have never seen before. And that is super, super exciting. And I think it's just a really special thing. So we're still able to come to the showgrounds. Obviously, we don't have the crowd that we may have liked to have had, but we do have, you know, this beautiful stage set up. And we do have a guest interview. Haha, <laughs> surprise! You thought you thought you were going to be stuck with me, but fortunately, you have been saved by a gentleman joining me here. As uh, yep. would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, definitely. Um, my name's Phil, and I'm the head of competitions at ECA. So all the different competitions uh, that we run throughout the year, and obviously esports is a new one that we're doing this year. Um, <laughs> And using the sort of, yeah, this is a bit of a, a, a test in regards to future well, years. Well, very, very fortunate then that I was just talking about sort of the unique circumstances of this ECA to have you coming up here at this time. I mean, for you, someone who's sort of been organizing like these sort of events, has this proved to be a unique challenge, I suppose, this year? Yeah, definitely. Like, we, we, we normally run, like, over 50 competitions. So we're, we're, we've only sort of run probably eight this year. And obviously, this is probably a unique opportunity uh, in the COVID year to actually sort of move to an online format. So we've done different ones like digital photography and bush poetry online and all those sorts of things. But obviously eSports is, is a growing growing um, sector and yep. we we're very keen to sort of get on board and um, try and also link it with the, um, the ag message that we're trying to uh, promote um, as yep. part of our charter. So I suppose then looking at that and looking at this game and so far what you've experienced so far, how, how much do you feel it actually relates to proper farming? I mean, you can see the similar equipment and tools, but yeah. how accurate would you say it is procedural-wise? Um, I'm not really a farmer <laughs> myself, but um, it, 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 it looks pretty realistic. And I think that's the whole message we're trying to do is that, that, that field to fork um, you know, message that we're trying to get out there. So, so the logistics chain of actually being able to harvest Taking, mm -hmm. taking things to market. So this is definitely the, the front end of it um, in, in a virtual world. Yeah, it's, it's super exciting stuff. And then you add that element of competition. Something that, I mean, don't get me wrong, the showgrounds are a massive space, but to try and hold an event like this physically, I feel like would be a bit of a stretch. <laughs> so being able to do it digitally, I think adds a unique spin. Is this your first esports event? By yeah, any chance. Yeah, definitely. So, so I'm kind of curious then, what is sort of your initial impressions of what's going on? Yeah, I, 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 I'm really enjoying it actually and it's <laughs> good to see sort of the kids getting involved and, and things like that. But also I think it's really good to actually, yeah, see that sort of that ag message in, in a digital space. So, yeah. Yeah, well hopefully, you know, you'll continue to enjoy yourself and we do get to see it grow. I mean, it's really special I think that there is this sort of game that is out there on the market that actually does have sort of that competitive scene. So where you can relay that same ag message that's it, it just seems like a match made in heaven is what i'm getting at. it just works so well <laughs> yeah, definitely and it's also i think it, it it's a teamwork as well which mm -hmm. is really important and also i think the strategy in regards to sort of you know where your bottlenecks are in, in, in the supply chain so if you can sort of work as a team and and work out how much to harvest how much to bail get it yep. get it into the barn it, it, it's all about that efficiency that we're actually sort of striving for in a, in, in agriculture as yep. well I mean, yeah, obviously, I feel like, you know, being able to manage everything to sync cohesively, 
to the optimum efficiency, the time management skill as well underneath that pressure. Right? There's a lot of similarities, I feel, uh, both in this game and I suppose in that agricultural environment. Yeah, exactly. And, and one, of the, one of the key things we're, we're really focused on is, you know, there's lots of different careers in ag. And I think part of that is that, that, that whole, you know, problem solving, ha how to get the most productivity out of a piece of land. And I think, you know, from a harvesting and point of view, I think, you know, th this game really lends it, lends it to that sort of environment. <laughs> Excellent. Well, that's great to hear now. One last question before I think the players are getting ready to get back out there. I have to ask, who do you think it's going to take it in the end? Is it going to be a city school or is it going to be one of the regional schools oh, who winds up? I think it'll be a country school. You yeah, a regional school, definitely. I think, you know, like particularly like the boarders from TSS, I think they'll start getting their... <laughs> their I think they, they, they did pretty well in that first game and I think... You know, probably some of them have probably got a bit of a, a rural background, so I've probably seen the, the machinery in, in, in true life. So, um, yeah, so I'm, 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 I'm sort of gunning for a, a regional school to take it out. All right, well, we'll see how that goes. Thank you so much for joining Thanks. me up here, Phil. It was a pleasure talking to you. Now, it does look like we will be getting our players back into that pick and ban phase in just a few moments. I'm giving them sort of that thumbs up to go right now. You can see... Yeah, thumbs up to all you, by the way, watching. Uh, thumbs up to everyone around. This has been an amazing event thus far. Now, I did mention before that this was a best of three. However, we're still playing all three. Even if we do see the side of Kelvin, I'm sorry, Forest Lake uh, take game number two, just like they take game number one, we're still going to go the distance. We're still going to be playing all three matches because, well, this is a fun event. We're here for fun, we're here to learn, we're here for the spirit of the competition. So we just keep playing on as we're going through once more our ban phase. And we're seeing a lot of the powerful tractors actually being taken out of the equation by the side of Forest Lake. Obviously speed is one of those important things, but power can be important as well in terms of just like how much you're able to lift, how much you're able to tow, and sort of maintain that speed. All of the vehicles used in this game have their own sort of set of stats sort of based on, you know, horsepower, fuel, uh, the area, um, this is more towards the equipment, like the harvesters, like how wide they are be, how fast they can go, what tools they're actually able to equip with. As we can see, all of our tractors being locked in right now. A couple of those front loaders obviously being prioritized. Super important in getting those hay bales and everyone will be locking in very momentarily. Soon we will be kicking this one off. But most importantly, I do want to see what passives people go for. So, ooh. The UCB actually getting locked in. Now, this is one of the few tractors I have a little bit of knowledge of. It's actually one of the fastest in the game, if my research was correct. So I'm excited to see it get put to use by the Forest Lake side. As now we take a look at what exactly passives each of these teams are going to be going for. Obviously, Transport Company, that big old trailer that you sometimes see, that's what's getting locked in initially. In response, we're getting bottleneck for that greater bridge control, trying to disrupt their opponents. Elvin Grove. I think it's really important Kelvin Grove does get that bottleneck as well because that is kind of one of the elements where they did start to struggle with towards the end. They didn't really get all those hay bales through. Under pressure, going to get locked in as well for the side of Forest Lake. And Unstoppable will get picked up by Kelvin Grove. And those will be your passes in this one. We are getting ready to start off game number two. As we are going for it right now. Three, two, one. Underway, we are on to the farm, as you can see. Useless Snow sort of leading the charge right now for Forest Lake, going straight for that baler. The giant harvester as well is being focused by Philly Lefton. It's actually a race right now for that one harvester, or is it? No, Philly Left, he's... Where's Philly Left going? Philly Left, I thought, had a destination in mind, but it says it's kind of driving to who knows where. Okay. Well, not what I was expecting initially. I do like the fact that Forest Lake is prioritizing the equipment at this stage. Boo Radley already getting, I believe that is one of the harvesters out there, as we're going to see. Yeah, one of the larger harvesters getting it ready to go, and it's going to start nailing that wheat, obviously right in front of the farm as well, as you can see. So Boo Radley, a good start right there, and all the way on the other end. Meanwhile, taking a look at Sponkle, a similar approach this time in front of the barn. So... Adaptation coming from the Kelvin Grove side. They recognize what might have not gone correctly the first time around, and now they are adopting their strategy. Blob Band on the far end as well. I believe it's going to be harvesting that grain to probably get an initial grain advantage. Now, I'm curious if either of these teams are really going to make a push for that first bail, get that two times multiplier on the first one being pushed through, as we can 
Take a look back at that other side right now. I believe I saw Danny Boy already on the baler and Useless Snow already with the front loader. So it does appear as if the side of Force Lakes are going to be going for that bail rush. Although Danny Boy, I'm not sure he actually had the baler on initially. He's just going to try and make sure that's going before he starts collecting all of this grain that Boo Radley is so generously laying out in front of him. Blobman as well, already on his third push down. So that is a lot of grain. But no one really there to help out just yet as Philly Left still trying to decide what piece of equipment they really need. Looks as if Philly Left has grabbed a front loader, but still trying to decide. A little bit confused where Philly Left is going. I mean, I, we've brought it out at the beginning. Philly Left was kind of just driving around. And look, driving is fun, and so is learning how to drive in this game. And unfortunately, Philly Left just indecisiveness at this stage. I would recommend going for a bailer, personally. I think getting a bailer would be very, very important for the side of Kelvin Grove, where they're sitting right now. Take a look back over here. Look at this beautiful straight line of grain. No one around. Collect it as the rest of Forest Lake are all the way down here. And you can see, you know, Harvester in front, Baylor immediately behind. And Useless Snow actually with that front loader has himself a hay bale. And there we go. It does look as if Philly Left may have actually finally picked up one of the balers themselves. Useless Snow has that hay bale looking for that two times multiplier. One of the bridges are down. Let's see if Useless Snow will be able to correctly drop that one onto the conveyor belt and get that initial 40 points, which could be absolutely massive for the side of Forest Lake as we approach the bridge. Are we going to be able to execute it cleanly now? Again, I had to play around with this game before, and I'm not ashamed to admit it. I got stuck on that bridge, and then my tractor nearly flipped over. But Useless Snow, a better driver than I am, gets across cleanly. And you can see that bridge will start to rise. And that's all right. Useless Snow should be able to drop that hay bale right there on the conveyor belt. Has plenty of time to go for it, as it appears no one on the side of Kelvin Grove has even made a move for a hay bale just, just yet. Useless Snow taking time to line it up perfectly. Oh. There we go, here we go. Uh, my apologies, I meant to hit this button. Here we are. All right, Useless Snow, lining it up. Doesn't look that straight. It could be a little straighter if I'm, if I'm gonna be picky, if I'm gonna be nitpicky. I don't know about this one. It's gonna get a little tight, I reckon. Let's see if it's able to slide on through. 40 points can be absolutely massive in this game. Is it straight enough? Is the aim true? You know it is. So 40 points and the first hay bale does go over to the side of Forest Lakes, and that is a pretty massive lead. Taking a look back over at the Kelvin Grove Farm, Blobman continuing to blob on these mostly straight lines of grain just being laid out, but no one there to really start collecting them yet, and that could prove to be a bit detrimental. Where is the baler right now? I believe it was Philly Left who was initially going for it, but not too sure what we see right here as Philly Left Actually now has a bit of a front loader. It's going to be trying to get some hay bales for themselves. Does grab one of them. Just speeding on through. Has that bridge down, but it's going to destroy some crop in the process of getting there. You can just see how slow those tractors start to go when you start to drive through that weight and the actual damage that it inflicts. This is why you want to drive on the side roads um, or get special tires that don't actually damage your product. This game, the realism in it, actually extends that far, so... I mean, you can see that road that he took. I, at the end of the day, I, considering at the speed and the efficiency that the teams are going at, it's not the worst situation in the world, but just something to be mindful of. Is we're still waiting for Philly Left to really make a push across that bridge. And instead of pushing across, it's actually just trying to line it up a little bit straighter, it appears. I'm going to play a little bit of um, the parallel parking game, it appears. Sponkle keeping on, keeping on. A double harvester strategy at the moment in play for Kelvin Grove. But no one really on a baler and... The one person with the front loader still kind of struggling with the bridge. Very curious to see how this will progress moving forward. Blobman has actually jumped out of the harvester, which I find interesting. I'm curious to see where Blobman will be going. As oh, a little bit of a POV cam right now for Philly Left. It's, all right, well, driving forwards isn't working. Maybe we'll try reversing over the bridge, perhaps. And Oh, no, we lost the hay bale. That's the most important part. As you see, Philly Left going to go ahead and try and get in reverse to try and get it into position right now. Meanwhile, back on the blue side, the Forest Lake side, uh, already we can see the loader into effect right now. Just loading up those hay bales has the third one about to be grabbed. Useless Snow going for it a lot earlier than what we saw in game number one. And this is very critical for the Forest Lake side as 
I mean, if they can start really getting those points going, imagine if they actually had the multiplier going. And I think they're thinking the same thing, because Danny Boy has already picked up that giant trough, and it's going to start loading the grain right on in. But look how much grain just got dumped on the ground and not into the trough. A little bit awkward right there still. A very, very full harvester from Boo Radley. And that does mean Danny Boy should be able to get it. But look how wide this harvester is. I did say width is very important. And it does mean the harvester can get more grain, but it's going to be that much more difficult for Danny Boy to almost drive alongside it, as you can see. Some difficulty in controlling the tractor at this stage. Just got to take your time. Stay patient. Make sure you get it correctly. Good things will come. Taking a quick look over back at the other farm. That is the Kelvin Grove Farm. Blob Man. So much grain on the ground, and it's all just so far away from anything. He does have the harvester right now. He's going to be looking to start make, Sorry, not the harvester. The baler. And he's going to be start looking to make those hay bales, but has to start slowly driving now. And here we go. Start collecting those hay bales. I'm actually a bit of surprised by this. If Bobman's strategy was to kind of do everything himself, why would he do it on the village side? It could have been so much more effective if he had actually done it on the farm side in this situation. And Oh, I mean, you know what? you got to make do sometimes. And Kelvin Grove, this is a similar mistake that they made last time, and it was one of the factors as to why they were a little bit too slow in sort of capitalizing on those hay bales. Perhaps this time, though, they are moving a little bit faster. As you can see, Philly left. Actually, it looks like Philly left has finally gotten over the farm and has actually gone to that other side right now. So we can see right here, the hay bale is there, Philly left. I believe in you. This has been about five minutes in the process, or okay, more realistically, it's been about three and a half minutes in the process of trying to get this one hay bale into that farm. And no, Philly left, don't give up now. It's so close. You can just push it in, but instead Philly left is going to go ahead and collect some more. So I believe the strategy at this stage for Kelvin Grove is to get as many of these hay bales as close to the barn as possible. And during those final moments of the game, just cash it all in and get as many points as quickly as possible. On the other side as well, it does look as if Useless Snow may be about to try and cash in themselves as we're trying to find a good camera angle for Useless Snow. The power-ups actually have now been dropped. So this could be a very interesting situation, especially, especially, especially if Forest Lake actually gets the bale power-up, gets their multiplier for times three, and gets all nine of these hay bales into the farm, that lead could be massive, and it's a bit of a defensive power-up grab, as instead of getting the hay bale boost, it is a grain boost, which has been activated by Kelvin Grove. You have to feel like that was sort of a defensive play right there, because had that been a bale boost, had we seen those three times multipliers, Forest Lakes could have taken a massive lead. So good call by the side of Kelvin Grove, just to make sure that does not come into play. Back onto the other side of the farm right now. We can see Boo Radley just kind of chilling along, continuing to just sort of jump grain out there. We haven't really seen anyone make a play until now for that grain multiplier, and it's going to be coming into effect, as you can see right here. Danny Boy is going to be dumping that grain with the grain multiplier in effect. This is going to lead to a massive advantage, potentially, going for Forest Lakes, and as soon as that multiplier starts to arrive, I do expect to see some of those hay bales that have been dumped at the Forest Lakes barn get cashed in on. As we watch Danny Boy right here, just sort of filling it up. Powering it up. Is it actually in right now? It is. It is. And look at the multiplier go. Fantastic bit of play. Will the rest of Forest Lakes look to capitalize on it? You can see Useless Snow. He has gone ahead and should be looking to start stacking up. And I do believe he's actually going to be going for the conveyor belt as well. And this would be a very, very smart play because that's how you take advantage of that three times multiplier. The fact that it's a three times multiplier as well does mean that the conveyor belt has been broken for the side of Kelvin Grove. They can only score underneath in that barn as well until they get some grain in. Uh, and I do not believe anyone on Kelvin Grove has really made a play for grain. And if they're going to, they need to start moving now. Blobman still in the baler. No one's really in a harvester. So it looks as if... Unfortunately for Kelvin Grove, if they're going to make the play for the grain for that multiplier, there might not be enough time. They might just have to try and just mass as many hay bales as possible into that barn. But with the sheer stack of hay bales right here for Useless Snow to put in, well, I think we're going to be seeing a very high score potentially. Now the conveyor belt is moving at 20% speed because of how high that multiplier is. So if Useless Snow is going to want to get all of these hay bales into that barn, he is going to have to act quickly. We'll see if they'll be able to do it. This first one is going to go in, and this is going to be a massive, massive point spike as in it goes. 30 points each time one of these hay bales goes all the way through. We do see Kelvin Grove actually starting to get some points in for themselves on the other end, but again, they can only get 10 points at a time. They cannot get 30 points for hay bale like Forest Lakes because of that multiplier. And if they are going to go for the multiplier, well, Blobman 
Yeah, he's just not in position to do it, unfortunately. He's going to have to drive these hay bales all the way to the other end of the farm. It's really up to Kelvin Grove to just sort of stack as many hay bales as possible and get them in. But when we take a look at how many hay bales Forest Grove have to work with, there isn't too much, and it is kind of all scattered at this stage. Billy Left is just kind of taking one at a time from the farm. Sponkle is driving with the baler, but it's going to have to go the long way in order to get to that bridge. And even then, there's only like two or three right there. I feel like at this stage of the game, if the side of Forest Lakes is going to be able to sort of just stack all these through, although Boo Radley actually isn't even working with the conveyor belt anymore. He's content to just push them into the farm. This is looking like a Forest Lakes victory, and I have been told in between games that we have sort of abandoned the we're going to be playing three games method. If Forest Lakes take this, they take the series. They advance to day number two, and they have three minutes. They have all the hay bales on their side of the farm in front of the barn, and it looks like they might be getting a very comfortable win. This could be actually be the strongest win I think we've seen so far today, unfortunately. And Calvin Grove, they are still on that back foot. Blobman trying to do what he can. He had to drive so far. It took about a minute to take it all that way, and all he brought was one hay bale sponkle coming back out there with that harvester. He's going to try and get as many hay bales as possible in that harvester, taking three or four, but even then, with the times multiplier, Kelvin Grove needs to get eight hay bales into that barn in two and a half minutes. I don't even know if they have eight hay bales on their farm in order to do that. Forest Lakes just so far ahead at this stage of the game, and I feel like, you know... At this stage, it's just it's, it's the style points. It's how many points can they really get for themselves now because of how slow that you know conveyor belt is going. They can maybe only get two or three depending on how like aligned this is. I'm not sure if Useless Snow really got that one correctly on to the conveyor belt, but Boot Radley should be able to line it up quite cleanly, taking their time, getting it nice straight, nice and centered. Here we go. Let's take a look at the dismount. This is always the most important. You don't stick the dismount, you don't get perfect tens. It's how it works in just gymnastics, and it's how it works in Farm Simulator 2019. Realistically, both these sort of avenues, so, so similar. And look at that! Nearly perfect, unlike the one we saw before, which will fall to the ground and become a useless seat. But that's okay, Boo Radley gets it done. A little bit of celebration, waving around that front loader. Useless snow. Actually, instead of trying to collect the rest of the hay bales, has decided to go back into the farm. Danny Boy as well, kind of going for a bit of that victory, driving a 100-point lead right now in favor of Forest Lakes. And if we jump back over to that red farm, to the Kelvin Grove farm, you can see Blobman trying to just get anything going, but the conveyor belt really is not going to add anything to it. You have to go push that in the barn, unfortunately, yet Blobman's still going for the conveyor belt. And Putting it in at a 90 degree angle as well, it would just wind up getting stuck on the, the top of the barn. Blobman though, you know what? You still want to stick a dismount and there I go. Look at that thing just come screaming up the conveyor belt and no, it falls! Oh, very unfortunate Blobman and oh, misses with the front loader as well. Sparkle now running out, just having a bit of a run around. I think Kelvin Grove may have realized it's going to be too little too late for the red side. Philly left doing donuts. Sponkles jumped into the top of the barn to hang out at the other end. At our other farm, however, you can see more points just being stacked on for Forest Lakes, just like they will be stacking on to the semifinals. They're looking to push it to 200. Can Boo Ratley get that hay bale down in time? It's not necessary but he still wants to try and get it. It goes down. The race is on. This is the most exciting race you will see all day. 20 seconds. Can the Hay Bale make it? I want to hear you cheer. Go Hay Bale. Boo Ratley's going to try and push it, but this isn't fall, guys. You can't push it like the balls in that game. And, well, I don't think it's going to make it. Five, four, three, two, one, and Forest Lakes advance to the semifinals. A strong victory for them, and I think the most important stat that you see on that screen right there is the five bales delivered on the conveyor belt. This has been an aspect of the game, again, that a lot of these schools kind of struggled with previously as new players, so they are still learning the game for that first time, but being able to get the hay bales on that conveyor belt, being able to use that multiplier, so, so critical in a game like Farming Simulator 2019 because it's all about those points, it's all about maximizing the efficiency of those points, and Throughout this series, and at the end of it all, it is Forest Lakes who was the more efficient team. Now, joining me on stage, of course, will be the Forest Lakes team captain. Would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, hey, my name is uh, Carlton Wicks. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, who were you in terms of, like, on the game itself, though? Oh, I was um, Useless Snow. Uh, oh, so you were Useless Snow. So, yeah. 
Tell me, what, did you have like a set strategy coming into this at all? Were you kind of winging uh, it, or what, no, what was the game plan? We, um, well, over the week, like we knew about this for a while, and uh, during the week, I sort of did some research, watched a couple of videos, and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, sort of got an idea of what the uh, tactic was. So. Yeah. Now, when you watch the videos and do the research, I'm assuming you watch some of, like, I, I sort of would say the professional league, and, and you sort of think it's like, oh, that looks pretty easy. How much different is it watching the pros and how easy they make it look compared to when you actually get behind the monitor itself and give it a go? Yeah, I, um, like, we, we were, um, got a little bit of practice beforehand, but <laughs> I came and I tried to operate the, uh, for, the forklift, <laughs> and it was very, very different. Like, it just... The controls were so weird, and like getting a hang of it at first was very difficult. And yeah, yeah. But once you did get a hang of it, it did appear that you guys had that more solid strategy, and it did pay out in the end. You you mm -hmm. had enough points to advance. When you sort of like look at sort of the team building and the strategy, so like, is this something that forced like schools Ted school I should say? There's only one force like that I'm aware of. Is that something that's sort of like helped promoted by the teachers and sort of the esports program that you have at that school? Is that like one of the skills that sort of is encouraged for you students? Team building. Yeah. Oh, yeah, um, like, both in this and our league program, we have to work together. Mm -hmm. um, you know, our uh, administrator, he uh, yeah. sort of makes us come down every week and, you know, talk about what our games and stuff and make sure we're watching it and stuff. So it's, yeah, really good. And then, you know, having opportunities, I suppose, like this to play on a stage, obviously, circumstance, we don't have necessarily the crowd yeah. that we could have. But do you feel like, does it... Does this atmosphere still feel that same special feeling? Yeah, I, yeah. I, when we walked in here this morning, it was like, holy crap, this is like such a big place. And to be playing on the stage is just incredible. Like, this is such a new experience. Because um, I remember watching some kids from my school go to the league tournament for the Echo mm -hmm. last year. And it was, that's, I want to do that. That was, it was, yeah. And now you get to do it. Obviously, there's a bit more hay around here. <laughs> um, some, some pails and that. A bit more farmy, I feel like, than what League of Legends yeah. was last year. Although, I do remember that event. It was a lot of fun. Last question before I send you on your way, because obviously you have a big day tomorrow. How are you feeling, you know, going up against Earnshaw, battling to be that number one sort of city school? Do you think you guys can take it? Um, I reckon, yeah, like, uh, we haven't really played much. But now that we have an idea of what we can do, or what, yeah, what the, uh, we are going to do, we can um, sort of plan around that better and maybe develop something different other than the uh, go-to. All right. Well, yeah. I wish you good luck then for tomorrow, and I look forward to calling your games then. On that note, it is time to say goodbye for qualifying day here at the Young Farmers XP Esports Cup presented by Aero Energy. A big thank you to them and a big thank you to all of the schools, all of the students, teachers, parents supporting this budding esports program. To all of you watching on Twitch chat, I saw there's a fair few of you out there. Shout out to Copt, by the way. He's a cool dude. Check him out, TNG. But I digress. It was a lot of fun here at the ECA. And this was only the beginning because tomorrow we will have our semifinals and our grand final. $1,500 prize pool on the line. 1K for first place to help that school build their esports program. Starting at around 12.30 tomorrow, I'll be there. I hope to see you there as well. Good night, everybody. See you tomorrow. Join us for 360 Baby, our virtual animal nursery. It's all part of ECA 2020 online. Cute.
Give me reasons to doubt. Try to keep me down, but I'll put the flame out. You can't get to me. Throw your sticks and your stones. Go break all of my bones. You won't ache my soul. You can't get to me.